how I know if somebody is a false prophet or a false teacher. And tonight we'll be using these terms both synonymously, false prophet, false teacher, very similar terms. We're going to be using them both tonight in describing how to stay deception proof, how to stay away from false teachers and false prophets. So many people, and this is what I want to draw the foundation tonight. So many people think that the false prophets or false teachers are rare, few and far in between, but I'm going to show you tonight that they are much more common than you think. And this is a very important topic because it's possible that you're listening and maybe one of your favorite preachers is a false teacher or a false prophet. And let me say this, all of these things I'm going to give you, indicators, signs, they all apply to me as well. I'm not typing these up and writing these up and studying and looking at scripture and studying all the scriptures of a false prophet and false teacher and going, none of these could possibly be me. I'm saying, Lord, I want to stay humble. I want to stay teachable. I want to stay moldable. And I want to make sure that I never fall into deception. I want to make sure that I never deceive anybody. So help us tonight by sharing this broadcast so we can get the word out. In fact, let me show you this. In Matthew 24, 11, Jesus said, many false prophets shall rise up. And here's what Jesus says they're going to do. They're going to deceive many. So this was not some random guy with a tiny ministry or someone in a trench coat trying to deceive people. And here's what I want you to get. They're not false prophets if you know, and they have a ministry called False Prophets Incorporated or False Prophets Nonprofit or False Prophet Ministries. No false prophets label themselves, market themselves, or publicize themselves as false prophets. And Jesus said, here's what you need to know, Matthew 24, 11, is there's going to be a lot of them. It's not gonna be five of them or 10 of them or YouTube channels with a thousand subscribers. They're going to be incredibly prevalent, especially in the last days. We know the Bible says, as we continue to go into the last days, false prophets are going to rise. Those claiming that they are the Christ or claiming that they are anointed, claiming that they are of God, claiming that God has mandated them, God has called them. And we're going to talk later too about false apostles, but you need to know. So don't sit and go, oh, this broadcast isn't for me. Click off and say, it's not relevant. I say, how are you going to dedicate an entire broadcast to false prophets? And I'm going to tell you how I'm going to is because Jesus said, there's going to be many of them, a mass majority are going to be false prophets and they're going to deceive many. Jesus said there's going to be a rise. And friend, let me tell you something that we are living in the rise of false prophets that right now share this broadcast. Come on, everyone right now on Facebook, hit share. Right now, there is a rise of false ministries, false prophets, false evangelists, false apostles rising up in the end time church. And these are people that claim to be the Christ, which is not like Jesus Christ. Here's what you need to know. They're not going to claim to be Jesus Christ. That's too obvious. They're going to claim to be the Christ, which the Christ means the anointed one. So they're going to claim to walk in the anointing of God. They're going to say that God is speaking through them. People that say, I speak for God. People who say they preach the gospel. People who say they're Christian and they're going, what Jesus said, to lead many astray. Millions will be led astray. And I'm going to shout this and don't, I don't care what y'all say, into another gospel, into following another Jesus and ultimately be deceived by these false teachers. It's not hard to be deceived by false teachers because they preach a gospel that sounds good, that looks good, but is what the Bible calls another gospel. And again, you might say, why would this topic even matter to me? Because it's possible you're listening to them. It's possible you were raised in a church and highly likely of false teachers or just people that simply don't realize there is a watered down, manipulated gospel of convenience that they are preaching and they're preaching comfort. And this is what's being preached in most churches. Is And it's not the gospel of the Bible. It does not reflect who God really is. And you can live your entire life. I know I'm coming out of the gate strong. You can live your entire life following a myth or the Bible calls a fable thinking that you're genuine, thinking that you're in the faith. And so we need to break deception. This is why the New Testament says people were turned over to myths. They followed a watered down, ear tickling, deluded gospel. And I want to tell you right now that there is a real revival. Come on, who am I preaching to happening right now as I speak of people waking up and some of you are part of them. And so I know you're shouting right now in your chair, wherever you're at, 
waking up to the reality of who God really is. And they say, Isaiah, I was in church my entire life, but now I'm waking up to who God really is. I'm waking up to the reality of the power of God. And friend, when you really meet God, come on, help me back me up tonight. When you really meet God, the first thing you'll think is, if this is God, if this is the God of the Bible, wait right there, who in the world who have I been following all these years? Like I've been in church 20, 30, 40 years, and now I meet the God of the Bible, then if this is the God of scripture, the God of healing, deliverance, breakthrough, power, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and I've been in church for 20 years, then who was that? Who have I been following? You've been following, the Bible describes it as another Jesus, a Jesus that we've created. And, and I have music going. Thanks guys. I, I didn't realize I had music going in the background the whole time. I didn't mean to have that music going, but a Jesus that we've made in our image instead of the Jesus that made us in his image. And that's why you woke up and you said, Isaiah, 40 years, I was following this religious Jesus, this Jesus that is not scriptural. And thank the Lord, is anybody else but me grateful that God has delivered them from religion, that God has save them from religion that God has opened up my eyes opened up my ears and turned my life around if you recently got awakened let me see a one in the chat if you are one of those that were in church for years and one day encountered the God of Scripture let me get a one in the chat because God is moving right now he's waking people up he's encountering people in cars and in basements and in buses he's encountering people in the church he's encountering people in drug houses encountering people in bedrooms and showers wherever you think you can hide God says I am moving and I speak over you tonight I feel the fire man I'm telling you I wish I could just run around my office right now that right now God is blowing the trumpet in Zion, that God is waking up his church, that if you have a lost family or a lost friend that is out there, we speak the hand of God over them. We speak the power of God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be a part of a community that is awakened to the power of God, that is broken out of religious deception. We break off every assignment. We break off every contract, every plan of the enemy to try to trap you into religion religion to try to deceive you Satan you are a liar and you are bound in Jesus name and we pray that the God of Scripture would be exalted that we magnify the Jesus the Messiah of Scripture we magnify the power of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit and we thank God the Father that he didn't leave us in a dead deluded church that God has woke you up so why did God wake you up so that you can be, as my shirt says, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. So you can be the John the Baptist in your family and in your generation so that you can see awakening and revival and you can break out of deception and stop following this different Jesus. How were you following him? Because you were under a false teacher or false prophet that was preaching a deceptive gospel. Not, in, not all in fact, now I would say this, not all in fact, know that they're false there is a lot of false teachers and false preachers that don't know they're false and let me explain this it's like the pharisees they didn't mean to be pharisees they were accidental pharisees they weren't trying to be you think the pharisees were walking around knowing they were religious saying oh we know that we're being rejected and we're going to go to hell and we know that you know we're missing the messiah they were not purposely they were zealous and passionate about being religious but they were wrong. So they weren't Pharisees on purpose. So you might be accidentally deceived. Deception's only deception if you don't know you're being deceived. So you might have been an accidental Pharisee for years, but God is calling you tonight. Now, the way we can tell if we're in deception is by looking at scripture and seeing what does the Bible, and this is what I have to say tonight over and over. So we're gonna give you a lot of verses tonight. What does the Bible say about false prophets? I'm not talking about what a YouTuber says, what a TikToker, what does the Bible say about false prophets? And tonight, we're not talking about those that prophesy a word and miss the prophetic word. That would be a five minute video. It's not what we're talking about. We are talking about false teachers and false prophets according to the word of God and according to what scripture has to say about them because it gets much deeper than I prophesied and it didn't come to pass. That's, that's, that's not what we're talking about. That could be an element of a false prophet, but that's not the signs of the false prophets. Much deeper. We are talking about, listen to me closely tonight. I, I feel the fear of God. I'm just telling you guys. 
a global church system that is rooted in an easy consumerized deceptive gospel that Jesus Christ never preached and Jesus says this not only will many rise up but Jesus says many come on share this are going to be deceived so don't sit back tonight the 1760 of you and say I would never be deceived because the Bible says yeah even the elect will be deceived so I'm not sitting here going I would never be deceived by a false teacher I have I know people that were friends of mine that were false teachers and I'm like how did I not see that was deceiving how did I not how did I sit under that preacher and not realize they were preaching a false gospel this could be something which we're going to detail later as simple as preaching the gospel but living in a moral life behind the scenes the gospel's right what you're preaching is right but the lifestyle doesn't match making you according to scripture I'm going to show you this a false teacher so let's let's go deeper than this guy prophesied who would be the president and didn't come to pass or he prophesied a event and it didn't come to pass we're not that's not what I want to focus on I'm talking about the nature of a false teacher the nature of a false prophet so Jesus says there's gonna be many that rise up and there's going to be many deceived by them so what they're doing I hate to say it is working two categories those that are being deceived and those that are doing the deception and you might be either tonight you might be one of those and you just didn't know you were in deception and now you're like wow I'm a false teacher and I didn't even know it and how many know if I am a false teacher I want someone to preach something strong like this so that I can break out of deception and if I'm under a false teacher false pastor false leader and the reality is some of you may leave your church after this not because I told you to because you're gonna recognize these traits the Bible describes as false shepherds and you're gonna realize my pastor is a false shepherd again not having any intention of calling people out but my intention is to look at the Word of God and make sure that we come out of deception I don't look at these and say oh these are not me none of these could apply to me that would be pride I go Lord and this is honest before you guys I never want to deceive anyone and this is my heart to you guys transparent I never want to deceive anyone let me walk humbly before you let me take heed to your word let me stay humble and hungry so I never fall into deception let me remain have people in my life that I'm accountable to remain under spiritual authority because I Isaiah Saldivar being this is my heart I don't ever want to deceive anybody I don't ever want to be doing it for the wrong reason so I'm walking contrite broken weak before God and I've said this to you guys before I'm the weakest person you'll ever meet weak before God in the natural saying Lord I need your power I can't do this without you false teachers and false prophets do not have this attitude they are arrogant they know it all they are proud they are and I'm describing some of you of your friends they are above everyone else they are the men of God and nobody can talk to them can make eye con contact with them can relate to them because they are God in their own eyes and this is this cult worship personality some of these I'm just gonna say larger churches they kiss the ground that the pastor walks on I don't see that in scripture I see Jesus saying here here's how you become great you don't get an office the size of a person's house and you don't have a million dollar car million dollar uh, five million dollar house or ten million dollar building that's all great stuff praise the Lord if you're blessed he says here's how you become great and he gets on his knees and he washes his disciples feet and he goes that's how you become the greatest you guys are wondering how do I become the greatest in the ministry and Jesus grabs a towel not a title doesn't grab a doctorate degree some university gave him I've been offered doctorate degree several times I'm not taking them I don't want some degree in my wall that I didn't earn saying I'm a doctor what does that matter I'm do you better call me Dr. Isaiah come on guys miss me with all of that some of you out there that are doctors have more degrees in the thermometer more titles than a UFC champion yet you've done nothing for God and God is saying put down the titles and pick up a towel and learn to wash the feet of people the son of man come on share this did not come to be served but to serve and if we are false prophets we love to be exalted we love to be worshiped we love to be and be more concerned with building our kingdom and our empire than the kingdom of Almighty God now praise the Lord 
for big ministries and praise the Lord for our huge staffs. I told the Lord when this all started taking off and the YouTube and all this stuff going on, I said, okay, I, there's two routes I can take. And again, please, if you're out there and you've taken the other route, I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you what God has spoke to me for my life. I can hire 15 people, buy office complexes, build this huge network and empire and Isaiah Saldivar Ministries International and make it this massive thing where you can never talk to me. I would never get on a stream like this and talk to you directly to the chat and become this huge corporation, this huge entity and sit there and have 40 employees under me and become a machine or I could have one or two people helping me and maintain relatability, being able to talk with you guys, being able to pray with you guys, being able to do deliverance, being able to wash people's feet, being able to hang out after service, lay hands on people indefinitely. And I'm cho I'm choosing to take the route of humility and to say, Lord, I don't want to build a huge empire with 40 employees and be some God in my own eyes. I want to stay humble. I want to stay relatable. I want to stay contactable. I, I, I'm making up words now, but I want to be someone that's personable and listen I'm not tooting my own horn I've met many of you in the chat if you know and you came up to me you were all nervous and I was like don't be nervous I'm normal and I talked to you like you were my friend I'm not trying to be this guy that has my name I've been in pastor's offices Again, not throwing shade, but I am exposing people where their name is on the napkin. There's just accolades everywhere. I'm like, is this a pastor's office or a locker room of trophies? I mean, we have made gods in the image of men and our God is a jealous God. So you need to know there are false leaders and false prophets that are being worshiped and are walking in error. First John 4, 1 says, beloved, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Now watch this because many false prophets have gone into the world. Many, 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 not just one or two or five or a small YouTube channel. Many have gone out into the world. Now this was written 2000 years ago. So if many were there 2000 years ago, just go ahead and ask yourself, how many more false prophets and teachers do you think are out there today? So we're commanded by scripture to test spirits, test false prophets, and even on a level, which I'll show you later, call them out. And later we're also going to discuss how to test a prophetic word so we're not talking tonight about fault finding you can find fault in any preacher and any prophet and any teacher it's not what we're talking about i have no interest in pointing out every little thing about a preacher i don't have an interest in calling anyone out i don't have an interest my goal is not to fault find or be like i don't like the way that guy talks he's a false preacher and there's people legitimately right now that have made youtube videos on me that think i'm a false prophet because i yell or i talk fast i mean think how stupid that is so you're telling me all the prophets in scripture that the bible says shout this message which is in your bible are all false prophets because you don't like excitement because you're dull and dead and passionless and so because i'm passionate and i'm excited about it now i'm somehow a false prophet friend you want to know why i'm passionate because i was passionate at the bar i was passionate at the rave i was passionate at the club i was drinking all night people are like you preach so loud you lose your voice guess what friend i used to lose my voice when i was drunk out of my mind screaming doing keg stands and now that i'm saved you want me to be all calm and complacent and religious and dead like you I've literally looked at comments going, this guy has great content, but he's false because he yells and talks too fast. Get out of here. Smack him with the band hammer because there is passion and this is passion. And we've lost it in the church. I mean, we've lost passion. Like you can lose your mind for a football team, a bunch of grown men wearing tight pants, chasing a piece of pigskin, and your pastor's out there, ah, kick the ball, kick the ball, knows every name of every player. But then on Sunday morning, he's like, all right, guys, Today, we're going to open up to the book of Malachi. I mean, and praise the Lord if he talks that way. I'm not, I, I don't want to make fun of anybody, but I'm just going, okay, I don't mind you being calm, Pastor, but just don't be calm out there. I mean, be loud out there, then be calm in here. If you're going to be calm behind the pulpit or calm in church and worship, then when your favorite team is scoring the goal or you got the new watch or you hit the, you know, you're out golfing, you got the new club and you're excited, you get up at four o'clock in the morning to go golfing, don't get all mad at me because I got a little bit of passion. Don't get mad at me because you're putting people to sleep and I'm keeping people on their feet. I mean, come on, help me out tonight. I'm not looking at those type of things. I'm not saying like, he doesn't talk talk fast so he's false he doesn't shout so he's false that's not what we're talking about we're looking at scripture I don't want to build a community of people that are just calling everybody out for everything I want to build a community of people 
that are deception proof because they're rooted in relationship with God and they know the word of God. Listen to what I'm about to say on a serious level, a serious level. When you know the word of God on a high level, a serious level, the snake is not going to waste his time trying to deceive you because he knows you're demon proof. He knows that you're equipped to cut off his head. So he flees. And that's why the Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he's going to flee. He's going to come and go, I'm not even going to mess with that guy because every time I show up, he knows the word. He cuts me up in a hundred pieces, serves me up like sushi. So every time the snake tries to mess with you, you chop him into 10 pieces. So he's like, I don't even want to mess with that guy because he's demon proof because he knows the word of God and he's deception proof. He's always up in those broadcasts learning about how to break deception and false prophets. So he's just like, I don't even have time. Remember the devil's resources are limited. So if a devil, does that devil sends a demon your way, he has to take resources from over here, put them towards you. And he just like, I don't really want to waste my time on her or him because he's making my, the, every time I send a demon their way, they send back sushi. I mean, are you guys hearing me tonight? Is this making sense? Because they know the word of God. I want to be demon proof and I want to build a community that's deception proof. And that goes, oh no, no, no. We learned about deception. We learned about testing spirits. We don't play games up in here. We're not playing baby stuff. We're not baby. We're not playing baby church, baby Christian pacifier, Willy Wonka, as Alexander Pagani would say. We're not doing the Chuck E. Cheese gospel. We are serious about relationship with God and serious about the word of God. I and mean, this is why we preach everything. We don't just preach deliverance. We don't just preach miracles. We don't just preach cross. We don't just preach the blood. We preach everything. We preach the secret place. We preach prophecy. We preach dreams and visions. We preach deliverance. We preach the cross. We preach Acts 2.38. We take communion. We're doing all of it because we want to be well-rounded. I mean, I'm like, I'm teaching on every topic I could possibly think of. We've been teaching all month, all month on prophecy and we're going to keep going. We're going to talk about end times. We have lots of other stuff planned. It's because I want it well-rounded people that say, oh, Isaiah doesn't just talk about one thing. In fact, I've only done one and it wasn't even one whole broadcast on a Friday night on deliverance this entire year. And everyone's like, well, I thought all you could preach was deliverance. Are you kidding me? Guys, we have to be well-rounded in scripture. So now this is a major question we have to think about. Why would God even allow false prophets to deceive people? Or have you ever thought about this? Why would God allow false teachers to preach his word? Why doesn't God just strike them down? Or why doesn't God remove them? Why does God allow? Think about this. False prophets. We're going to ask the hard questions. And false teachers to have hundreds of thousands of followers. I could name people right now that are 100%, according to what I'm going to show you in scripture. According to scripture, not me. False teachers and false prophets. And they have 500,000 followers on Instagram. And they're Christian followers. How is that possible? How are these preachers with 500,000 followers preaching God's word and then get caught sleeping around and cheating on their wife for a year or three years or four years? And I don't even have to go into names because you've been seeing them fall like dominoes. It's why. I asked God this, why, why, why? And here's what I found, Deuteronomy 13, 1. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces you a sign or wonder, and if the sign or wonder spoken of takes place and the prophet says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us go worship them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreamer. The Lord, listen to this. The Lord, y'all aren't ready. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. So here's what he's painting a picture of. There's a false prophet, okay? who prophesies dreams and visions and they come to pass. He does signs and wonders. And now that they come to pass, everyone goes, oh, he must be genuine because everything he says comes to pass. But then he starts telling you, let's go follow other gods. How, how about here's one? Let's go follow presidents. Let's go follow politicians and worship them instead of God. Let's go follow idols. Let's go follow compromise, okay? Because my dreams and visions are coming true. Are y'all hearing me? Are you guys connecting the dot as we break 2000? And he says, let's go worship them. God says, don't follow them. Do not listen. Well, why would God allow the signs and wonders? They're doing it in God's power. And why would God allow the visions to come to pass? Because God says, I'm testing the people. So God, write this down, will allow false prophets and false teachers to prosper to test the people of God. So that's why you have these big celebrity preachers that have large followings that are in compromise and sin and God keeps allowing them to do miracles, allowing them to prophesy, allowing them to work in signs and wonders. And you're going, how could this guy be cheating on his wife behind the closed doors? But God's allowing this because God says, I'm testing you to see if you're genuinely following me or you're following them because God says, I'm allowing it to see whether you truly love me or you'll serve me. Because here's what's gonna happen. 
when they start leading you astray, they're going to say, no, 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 I'm not following them. I'm following God. He's the one that I want to love with all my mind, all my heart, all my soul. So this is why corrupt people, write this down, are drawn to corrupt leadership. And when you don't truly love God and you don't truly follow God, when you're just interested in checking God off of your list, you'll be attracted to false prophets. So he goes, listen, I'm allowing you to test you. If you really knew me or my word, you're not going to blindly follow leaders that cause you to follow other gods. There's preachers I can listen to. Listen to me closely with all my convictions, okay? Say I have a conviction against certain movies or certain music, right? Me, Isaiah Saldivar, and I listen to a preacher, and I've, I, this has literally happened to me, and I listen to the preacher, I have strong convictions, in my heart right and after i get done hearing him preach about like let's say the grace of god i've had times where i'm like maybe god's okay with me watching that bad movie this is isaiah saldivar maybe god's okay with me listening to worldly music maybe god's not that maybe this is not that wrong and i've been preaching for 10 years that this is sin maybe it is okay to drink and, and then i break and i go what why do i think that because the false teacher caused me to follow other gods if you're listening to a teacher and they're drawing you away from holiness away from oh i feel the fire of god does anyone else feel it away from righteousness away from consecration i'm going to show you and keep showing you they are false teachers and sadly a lot of preachers today especially in america are telling people it is okay to serve other gods. Are you seeing this? It is okay to serve success. It is okay to be complacent. It is okay to worship and put your family above God. It's okay to live a carnal worldly life because God still loves you. So they're causing you to follow other gods and we're okay with it. Here's what he says. He goes, you guys are okay with it. You like it. Paul said this, you happily put up with whatever they tell you. You happily put up even if they preach. And this is what Paul said a different Jesus, a different gospel, and a different spirit. And here's what Paul says, here's the problem. You're not even fighting it. Where is the fight? Where are, when, when are you gonna call, rebel against this false gospel and these false teachers and say, I'm tired of being lulled to sleep. I'm tired of being happy with it. Don't just go to church and say, I'm just happy with hearing a false teaching, false gospel, have a pastor that preaches against the word of God because, oh, praise the Lord, I feel good about myself and my sin. If you walk out feeling good about your sin, you're under a false teacher. Let it strike you. Let the word of God convict you. Do not put up with it and happily put up with what anyone tells you. Jeremiah 530. Again, we're not giving you my opinion. We're giving God's word. Jeremiah 530 says a horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. So if it says that, pay attention. Here's what the horrible and shocking thing is. The prophets prophesy lies. The priests rule by their own authority and oh i feel the fire of god listen to this and my people love it this way but what will you do in the end god says you want to know what's so shocking what now for god to call something shocking and horrible this is not like just some little light thing some side topic five minute video make you make on youtube he goes you want to know something shocking and horrible meanwhile by the way their abortions breaking out riots are breaking out people are getting killed and god says well, let me show you something else that's shocking and horrible the prophets are lying preaching a false message prophesying lying and he goes and here's the problem my people love it they love it. They love, and I want to tell some of you, you love false prophecies. I'm going to show you this. You love false teachers. Here's a sobering thing we need to come to grips with tonight. Deception is getting deep here, is a cooperative act. It's cooperative. In order for a false prophet to deceive you, they have to have something you want. You want to know why false prophets are in business right now? Why there's thousands of preachers in america and throughout the world that are false teachers false prophets they're only doing it for money they're only doing it for show they're living immoral lies they're they're using their power to manipulate people let me tell you why because there's a high demand and if there's no demand then there's no need for supply the reason why there's so much supply is because there's so much demand because you guys love when people itch your ears you love smooth pleasing nice prophetic watered down messages that appease the flesh we will prophesy and this is what's amazing we will prophesy to people that are in complete sin and we'll go god has all this amazing stuff for you and god loves you and all this stuff and we're like I'm, I'm like wait what i know that guy the guy's cheating on his wife 
He's addicted to alcohol. He's ab abusive. He's bitter and angry. I brought in a guest speaker and they prophesied over him. God has all these amazing things. You want to know what your future holds if you keep that life? Hell, destruction, torment, uh, the losing of your family, your wife leaving you, your kids hating you, but you're getting there preaching, oh, God loves you, and there's an amazing thing God has, and I see all this stuff in your future, and we're afraid as prophets, remember, this is not simple prophecy, to call out sin, and now we're validating people that are living in sin, saying, God's okay with it. We have an entire generation, I'm getting too real tonight, I'm gonna end up losing some people here, an entire generation that is comfortable, and let this just shake you tonight, comfortable on the road to hell comfortable comfortable in their sin because smooth candy crush preachers are telling us we are fine in our sin so the reason why god allows it is because the people love it we love this we've been seduced by false teachers and false prophets and i pray tonight that the deception breaks off of you in jesus name i pray someone wakes up in jesus names and come out of the fog in the mighty name of jesus god allows it one because he's testing us two because we crave false prophecies and the bible says that god will turn us over to our appetite god will turn us over to our desires god has given us a free will so stop being one of those that loves getting your ears massaged stop being one that loves getting your ears itched stop being one that loves when people justify your compromise i i literally love conviction i love when preachers in fact I don't even listen to preachers if they don't convict me. I don't even listen to preachers if they don't preach the word of God strong because I want to change. Why am I going to church or even listening to preaching if it's not going to convict me to change? So one of the ways we're going to put false prophets out of business is when you guys stop following them when you guys stop buying their stuff when you guys start lo stop loving their things. How about this youth pastors stop bringing all of these watered down youth preachers that get up there and that tell five jokes, preach an 18 minute message where there's no power, no altar call. And then you pack up the youth conference with 5,000 young people that are all addicted to pornography and drugs. And you bring in some hip, smooth, leather pants wearing preacher that doesn't have power to bring deliverance and breakthrough. I sat in one meeting and I cried. It was a church that sat 5,000. It was a friend of mine's youth conference. I sat in the back as the preacher was preaching, crying crying you want to know why i was crying not because the word of god moved me because i looked around at 5,000 teenagers that were addicted to everything you can imagine and this was in 2018 broken and hurting and i looked on stage and saw a guy wearing a v-neck i don't know how far halfway down his body with skin tight leather pants telling three jokes about some social media page and preached a 17 minute message there was no power there was no conviction and i said we have an entire generation that needs breakthrough deliverance that is battling suicide anxiety and depression and we have watered down weak false teachers false gospel preachers getting up there telling a couple jokes with no power of god no blood of jesus no cross and no breakthrough and our children are dying and going to hell let me not say children because children don't go to hell our young adults are dying in the street taking their lives and going to hell separated from god because we bring them into youth groups into places where they tickle their ears but god is raising up a remnant of preachers that are not going to be afraid to preach the word of god now jesus said something so interesting in john 10 about false teachers and false shepherds and many quote john 10 10 which is the thief's purpose is to steal kill and destroy have you all heard this i preach it a thousand times and we say that's the devil's job and i believe yes the devil does still kill and destroy but most people don't realize in the context of the verse jesus was not describing the devil listen to me tonight when jesus said the thief comes to still kill and destroy he was not describing Satan, although Satan does do, do those things. He was describing false leaders, false messiahs, false teachers, false prophets. And he said, those that came before me claimed to be great teachers, but they were false and they were thieves. And watch what he says in verse 11 of John 10. He says, I'm the good shepherd and the good shepherd sacrifices his life. Watch this now. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he's not their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks and scatters the flock. 
The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't care about the sheep. Jesus said the thief, which is the false leaders of Israel, they still, they kill and they destroy and they don't care about you. Let me just say this. Some of these pastors, you might be in a church with them. They don't care about you. He goes, these false teachers, this, this is the, one of the signs. They don't fight back when the enemy comes. They are passive to them being a pastor or a leader is a job. So why would they spend extended times off the clock fighting for you and delivering you? It's no wonder why I always hear my pastor won't deal with deliverance. My pastor won't spend any extra time. My pastor won't pray for people at the altar. It's because that's time outside of the hour and a half on Sunday of him having to help you fight off the wolf, the wolf being the enemy and also false teachers. But he says, when the wolf comes, to destroy the sheep, the false prophet doesn't help fight. You wanna know why? It's not in his job description. When you get hired and you get an interview to become a pastor, and I've been doing this thing, I've been in the game for 10 years, y'all. I've been in church over uh, uh, around 500 churches I've been to. I've been doing this traveling full-time for 10 years, I've been in hundreds of churches. Here's how a pastor interview goes in most churches in America. Are you good on social media? Are you good with people? Do you, how, how, how do you look? Are you attractive? Do you dress good? They don't care about your prayer life. They don't care if you live holy. They don't care if you know how to drive out a demon. They don't care if you fast. Do you look good on our website? And do you look good? Are you the right ethnicity to fit into the church to make us look diverse in front of the people? And are you good with meeting people? Are you good with networking? Are you good with hosting pizza parties? And that's all that honestly matters. It doesn't really matter if hell doesn't know you. It doesn't really matter if you're impacting the kingdom of darkness. And so you're just hired. You're a hireling. You take an interview and you get hired. And Jesus goes in John 10, you are a hireling. You're a thief. You're a false shepherd, and when the enemy comes, it's not in your job description to fight him, so you don't really care. And this was the issue. This is your Bible, so don't get mad at me. In Luke 13, when Jesus cast the demon out of the woman, he told the religious people, you're telling me not to do this. Watch this. On the Sabbath, because remember, they considered healing people work, so Jesus said, you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath, and so you're telling me not to deliver her because it's considered work. But Jesus says, you untie your donkey and take it to go drink on the Sabbath, but you're mad that I've untied this woman that was bound to a demonic spirit who is bound by Satan, and I've untied her and brought her to rivers of living water. This is a telltale sign of a false teacher as ministry is simply a job to them. It's a business, it's a check in and check out. But didn't Jesus come in and clean the temple and say, you've turned my father's house into a den of thieves? It's just all convenience. It's just all get them in and out as fast as possible with no real change. But he says, my house shall be called. I'm preaching to somebody tonight, a house of prayer. But because there's power in prayer, there is breakthrough in prayer. There is change in prayer. Prayer takes time and energy. Ministry, listen to me closely tonight. All of you pastors, is not my employer, is not my occupation. I am not employed by Isaiah Saldivar Ministries. I'm employed by Jehovah Jireh, my provider. God is the one I work for. I told people that on planes. Who do you work for? I work for God. Literally, I work for God. That's, that's who pays me. God pays me. I work for him. I do what the master says. I do what the good shepherd says and what he does. If God says tomorrow, go move to India, sell everything, delete all your channels, I will do it. Literally, when I got saved from being an atheist, I said, God, I'll give you everything and I'll do anything. I'm still living that 10 years later. Anything you want me to do. So I'm sorry, but you're not employing me. I'm not employed. That's why you're like, how could this preacher be so bold? I've never heard anyone talk like this because I don't give a rip about what people think. You're not paying my bills, you're not employing me. And if you don't sow and support and let God use you to support the ministry, God will still support me. So my source is not people, my source is God and God uses people. But understand ministry is not a job to me. It's the overflow of my relationship with Christ. I don't pray for people because I have to. I pray for people because I get to. Nobody, guess what, is forcing me to preach tonight. I'm not doing this because I'm making money. I'm not doing it for an income. I'm doing it for the outcome. The false shepherd doesn't fight back. 
It's time for some leaders to fight back against the forces of darkness. Why are our pastors not fighting back? When you see the wolf coming and you say, not in this house, you might be able to act a mess up in the house, the church down the road, but sorry, Satan, not here. Because if you show up in this church, again, we're going to make sushi out of the snake and the devil has no power. The devil shows up in my church, he leaves in a wheelbarrow. That's the mentality you need to have. You need to be vigilant against the powers of the enemy and you need to respond to people properly respond to the enemy properly and fight back now jesus goes on teaching about how the good shepherd and here's his resp- here's the response of the people in john 10 to jesus preaching about the good shepherd here's what they said this is about jesus word for word they said this in verse 20 he's demon possessed and out of his mind why listen to a man like that others said this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon can a demon open the eyes of the blind This is the backlash. Now, I get backlash, I'm not going to lie, but it's never as bad as this. They literally told Jesus, you're demon-possessed and you're out of your mind because you're preaching a gospel that is not the norm of what everybody else is preaching. So this is what Jesus had to come against when he started calling out false pastors, false prophet, and false teachers. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. So in other words, they don't wear trench coats. They look like normal, average, nice people. They come as sheeps. They don't come announcing their false prophets. They come as sheep wearing they come as sheep wearing sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wolves. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. 13, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen. They disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, he says, even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise, he, Paul says his servants disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, but their end will correspond with their deeds. In other words, their end will be destruction. So Paul is reinforcing that when we talk about false prophets or false apostles, they look like legit ministers. And this is why the church is okay with Satan being among them, because Satan comes among us as an angel of light. So how could we tell? Discernment and knowing the word of God, the two things the church doesn't have or doesn't know. Now, let me answer this, okay, as we transition here. Is it biblical to call people out? Yes, it's biblical to call people out, but it's not biblical. Listen to me closely, all of you on YouTube, to create a ministry where all you do is call people out. Did Paul call people out? Paul called out Demas in 2 Timothy 1.15. He said, Demas has deserted me and is in love with the world. Paul called out Phygelus and Hermogenes, I don't even know how to say their name, Hermogenes in 2 Timothy 1.15 for turning away from him. He said in 1 Timothy 1.19 that Jimenez and Alexander have shipwrecked the faith. He called out in 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, he called out in 1 Timothy 2.17, Hymenus again and Philetus who talked about and said their talk spreads gangrene. So Paul called out, you don't have to write none of those down or remember none of those, at least six false teachers and said watch out for them. So it is biblical. And Paul said that their, their theology spreads like gangrene. It's contagious. It's deadly. It causes things to fall off of the body of Christ. So I don't personally, God has made it very clear to me, Isaiah, don't call people out by name personally. So I don't do that. But it is a biblical thing to do. But you have to remember this and stay with me here and then I'll give you some more clear direction. Stay with me. You have to remember the apostle Paul was an apostle and had positioned the church. He was not a Joe Schmo Facebook keyboard warrior trying to go viral by calling everyone out. There's a big difference. He was not doing it for clicks, for views, or for clout. He was doing it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he was not being nasty about it. Some of you that want to call all these teacher, false teachers out, number one, you're nasty. You're nasty. You're rude. You're sarcastic. You're just, uh, you're just nasty. And number two, who are you? You don't have a following. You've done nothing for God. You're not an apostle. You're not even in a church. You're some guy living in your, your uh, basement somewhere. Literally, I watched two videos this last two weeks ago of guys on YouTube. Don't, don't waste your time finding them because they have like 50 views on them trying to call me out for believing in deliverance and believing in miracles and just dumb stuff. And both of them, number one, looked like they were filming from a basement but both, both of them are doing nothing for God. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at their pedigree, I'm going, you've done nothing, you have no fruit, and you've done nothing for God. 
So why are you gonna jump on here and try to be some keyboard warrior, Facebook prophet, um, TikTok theologian, and try to tell me about deliverance when you have not done anything but casted demons into people? So I'm not talking. Now, is it okay to call people out? Yes, but don't do it if you have no fruit, if you have no, no nothing going for you, you have no resume. It's like you're trying to tell someone how to do a job you've never even done. Like you don't even, you don't even walk with God. You're over there and like I go to their pages and I'm like, ungodly everything and i'm thinking and i and i'm supposed to take you seriously so we need to stop just being these these keyboard warriors and understand it's not our job to call everyone out so jude really breaks down some major characteristics of a false teacher and false prophet and the first chapter of jude of jude verse three he says dear friends i've been eagerly planning to write you about the salvation we share but i, I but now i find that i must write about something else urging you listen to this to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. So he says, I wanna write to you about all of our salvation, all of our faith. He says, but instead I have to write to you about something else because there is something dangerous happening and you guys need to be aware of it. I wanna talk about other topics, but he said, this is important. And he says, it's false teachers. It's false apostles. It's false leaders that have wormed their way into your church. And this is what he says in verse four. He says, I say this, because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago for they have denied our only master, Lord Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a mouthful right there that Jude says. So he describes them. Number one, write this down. We're going to go quick here. It's Friday night, y'all. Give me like 20 Pentecostal minutes. You don't, you act like you got plans tonight. Come on, give me, give me some time here. He goes, number one, sign of a false prophet. Write this down. Is these people, false teachers, they live ungodly. So they're, they're preaching the right message, but they're living ungodly. So this right off the bat, according to Jude, the first indication, they don't live godly lives. Now, when you look at the word godly life or living ungodly, think of this, the fruit of the spirit. Think of character. Think of the things we watch, the things we live and listen to, the, day, the, time, the way we spend our time. Is it godly? Is our character godly? Do people get around these pastors and leaders and say, man, they, they're just very godly when I'm around them. I remember hearing a story of a quote of a, of a very quote unquote famous revivalist that saw millions come through the revival who had saw millions watching online miracles break out salvations break out and if i said the guy's name 90 plus percent of you would say oh yeah i know that guy he's very very famous revivalist here's what one of his best friends told me personally he said after the revival would end the revival's not around anymore by the way he, he fell hard but he said after the revival would end he would go back to his hotel after preaching. Think about this. He would go back to his hotel, he would drink, and he would watch horror movies. This was his thing. He was addicted to horror movies. This is a man of God addicted to horror movies. And this is what Jude is trying to say. False teachers, they are ungodly. They preach, but they live an ungodly life. And God is looking for character over gifting. God is looking for character over talent. So if you, your pastor or leader over you is preaching all these things to you, but in the background, drinking and watching horror movies, and that's an example, living an ungodly life, Jude is warning you, these are false people because they are ungodly. They don't live that lifestyle, that godly lifestyle that the Bible says we've been given power to live. Now, when I talk about movies and music, I just describe some of your favorite preachers because they're out there with all the celebrities doing everything you can think of at the clubs, at the raves, at the parties, and they think, well, I'm just trying to reach them, but really they're living ungodly lives. Listen, everyone um, that we're, I'm talking about will preach a message, a false grace message that says, it's okay to live like this. Here's why, the grace of God. You can talk how you want, you can go where you want. You can listen to what you want. You can drink whatever you want. And then here's what they're going to say. Oh, Isaiah Saldivar, he's legalistic. He doesn't realize we're under grace. Because remember, Jude says, they'll tell you that grace is a license to sin. And they say, no, Isaiah, he's, he's preaching legalism, Old Testament. We're under the new covenant. We're under grace. We can do whatever we want because we're sin abounds. Grace abounds greater. But you need to keep reading because Paul says, should we keep on sinning for the sake of grace? No, no. It's not, it's the opposite. Grace is the empowerment to live a holy life, not the license to live in sin. If your pastor or, te or leader teaches 
you know, you can live how you want. According to Jude, not Isaiah, he's a false teacher. Because remember, he says they give a license to sin. He says they go around telling us the marvelous grace of God allows us to live immoral lives. If anyone you listen to preaches the grace of God allows you to live immoral, they are, according to Jude, a false teacher. False teacher. Jeremiah 23, 14 says, Also, among the prophets of Jerusalem, I've seen a horrible thing, the committing of adultery and walking in falsehood among the prophets. And they strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one has turned their back from wickedness. All have become to me like Sodom. So he says, these prophets are walking in adultery and falsehood and they're strengthening the hand of evildoers. So they preach and people don't turn their back on wickedness, they indulge in with wickedness. So that's a prophet living in immoral lifestyle. So false prophets, number one, they don't live godly lives. They live in compromise. Number two, write this down. Now I'm, some of you are like, man, I gotta go and follow some people after tonight. They preach a mixed message. Again, this is false prophets and false teachers. They preach a mixed message. Jeremiah 23, 13 says, among the prophets, and this is, Jeremiah 23 is the, is the is Jeremiah, God through Jeremiah indicting false prophets. He said, I saw this offensive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people of Israel astray. So this is mingling the things of God, prophesying with the things of this world. It's mixing, it's polluting. And what false teachers love to do is they love to pollute the message. So many pastors wanna mix into the word of God what the world is doing. And they're having all these series about movies and they use ungodly movies and they mix them in with the word of God to use illustrations. And some of that is okay, but you need to be careful when you're preaching about immorality and about worldliness and you're trying to mix it in with scripture we need to be careful that we're not propping up a worldly system we're tearing down the worldly system and that our loyalty is to god not to bail jesus said this now here's a, a question i always get isaiah how do i know if my pastor is preaching a false gospel i'm going to help you this will change your life jesus said not isaiah the road that leads to life is difficult is narrow and few people are going to find it so if your pastor preaches an easy gospel here's what it sounds like everybody come forward everybody could just get saved you don't have to do anything you can keep going back to your old life and don't change just pray a prayer it's easy it's like the rich young ruler oh you're fine as long as you give up everything jesus said no you're not worthy to follow me if they preach an easy gospel a convenient gospel, a gospel that doesn't change your life, that there's no repentance, no blood, no breakthrough power, they are preaching. And I can say it right now about your pastor without standing before God, they are preaching a false gospel because Jesus said the true gospel is difficult. The way that leads to life is a difficult, narrow road. So it's not this life where it's like, you can just live how you want. Just keep doing what you're doing, but add Jesus, sprinkle a little bit of Jesus and pepper onto your Sunday morning. And so instead of Sunday morning being hung over, just go to church for an hour and you're good, you're fine. That's a false gospel, that's an easy, it's easy to go for an hour and a half and live how you want all week long, have the same desires and priorities of the world. And that's a false gospel because Jesus said, the road is difficult. He said, the narrow gate is me and it's not easy. Many will say, Lord, Lord, we prophesied and they're not gonna enter. Many on judgment day will think I'm their Lord, but I won't be and they won't enter. They'll preach a easy gospel. Jeremiah 23, 17. They keep saying to those that despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in stubbornness of his own heart, they say, calamity will not come upon you. So let me just break this down and make it easy for you. People that are living in sin and that are living in stubbornness, they say, you're fine. There's no hell. There's no judgment. Here's what he says. Calamity will not come upon you. This means they have no backbone. They would rather speak what you want to hear rather than what you need to hear. So false prophets, again, not just saying a word that didn't come to pass, are those that prophesy peace during a time of war. They say there's no warfare. This is a big one. I hear this every week. There's no such thing as spiritual warfare. There's no battle. Everything's fine. Jesus did it all, defeated everything. We don't have to battle. That's a false prophet, false teacher. Why? Because they're declaring peace when really there's war. Because they don't want to be negative or offend you. False prophet, okay? False prophet. Number three, write this down. Number three, they deny the Lordship of Christ. They don't deny Jesus, but they deny him lording over people. Jude goes, they've denied, this is what Jude says, They've denied our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they say things like this. Jesus is only a friend. He's cool with you. He's your homeboy. 
do whatever you want. Jesus is hip. Just relax. Jesus has evolved. Have you all ever heard of progressive Christianity? We need to be more progressive. We need to calm down and evolve with the culture. It's not that big of a deal now as it was back then. False teacher, false pastor, you are false. A hundred thumbs down, false, 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 because you're denying the lordship of Jesus. Jude makes it clear to point out that he is our master, our master the Lord Jesus Christ. So no, you can't do whatever you want. We're bound by the standard of scripture. As Paul said this, I'm a slave to Christ. So whenever they get asked, and this is what you're going to see them, they'll get on TV or in a podcast. And this is what the uh, an interview will ask them. Is Jesus the only way to heaven? Here's what they're going to say. Here's, are you guys ready? Well, actually, no, there's no well. Whenever somebody asks you, is Jesus the only way? And your next answer is, well, you're already false prophet right there. Call him out. False prophet, false teacher. There's no well. Well does not belong at the end of, is Jesus the only way? There's only one word and one right answer. And the answer is yes. That's it. Absolutely. 100%. There is no other way. Mary is not an entrance. Muhammad is not an entrance. Joseph Smith is not an en entrance. The archangels are not an entrance. Good vibes are not an entrance. Being a good person. There is one entrance to God, to, to, the, to the Father, and that is Jesus. Jesus is the door. He's the only way. So just go away with all the well. If you've ever heard, if you listen to any preachers that have to say well, they are false and they are preaching another gospel. Now, the only way to life, write this down, is to live submitted to the Lordship of Christ. They Now, here's another thing they preach, false prophets. Jesus is the Savior, but not the Master, okay? So he's just, he wants to save you. Every week, the altar calls the same. There's no deliverance, no healing. It's just every week he wants to save you. Every week he wants to save you. Jesus wants to save you. He wants to save you. Does he want to save you? Of course he does. He wants to save you down on the cross to save you. But remember this. Jesus died as a savior. This is what your Bible says, but he rose as a king. So he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He's the governor of my life. They don't preach this. They always say get saved over and over and over. But what about Jesus the master? Have y'all heard that sermon before there? What about he wants to govern your life? Have you heard at your church on Sunday, God wants to rule over you? It's not like he does not revolve around my life. He's not an add on or like a side of fries. My life revolves around Jesus. Jesus does not revolve around my life. He's at the center and everything else is an add on. He's first above my marriage, above my kids, above my family. Everything else is Jesus. And this is what Jude says in verse 12. He says, when these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, they are like dangerous reefs. Here's what, here's what, here's what he says about false teachers that shipwreck you. They're like shameless shepherds who care only about themselves. They're like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. They are like trees in autumn that are dead, that bear no fruit, that have been pulled up by the root. They are like wild waves of the sea churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. Go read your Bible, y'all. This is crazy. They are like wandering stars doomed forever to the dark, to the blackest darkness. Look at the words. Look at the verbiage here of what Jude is saying. He's describing them as these people that are dead trees. They're just there. They're like on the stage. They're at the pulpit and they have a large following, but they're dead. And they're just walking around with death. And they're, they're like these uh, churning up the foam. And they're like clouds. And you're like, oh, look, what a nice cloud. I hope it rains because my crops are dying. And you look at them, but they never produce rain. Are you seeing this? He says they're wandering stars that are doomed to forever blackest darkness. I mean, this is what he says about false prophets. So don't think, oh, you're just being too hard. Hard, Isaiah tell that to Jude because that's who I'm quoting tonight this is his the heavy wording but here's what he says they can shipwreck you Isaiah why are you so passionate tonight about this and why is it a big deal because they can be the reason write this down they can be the reason that you shipwreck in your faith they can be the reason that you lose your faith because you're living a counterfeit Christian life under their teaching okay number four we're almost done they claim authority from their dreams and visions. Verse eight, this is what Jude says. In the same way, these people, false teachers, claim authority from their dreams. They live immoral lives, again, reinforcing, 
They defy authority and they scoff, listen to this, at supernatural beings, specifically demons and angels. He says they're always having dreams. Have you, have you, do you guys know these people? Always dream about this and dream about that. And it's like you tell them something and you're like, oh, I need an answer on this. And the next night they dream about it. It's like, oh, I have a dream here. And they're using their dreams to lead people astray. Now you might be in here going, oh, this man, this guy just jumped on. He must not believe in dreams. Wrong. I did over three hours of talking about dreams on my channel. I believe in dreams. What I don't believe in is using your dreams to manipulate and to have a power position over people and to dominate people and dominate their decisions. So he goes on to also talk about angels and supernatural beings, but watch what he says in verse 10. Okay, watch this. He says, and I'll, I'll, I'll go over all the points after, okay? Someone said, what is number four? Number four is they claim authority from their dreams and visions. Okay, that's number four. They claim authority from dreams and visions. But watch what verse 10 says. These people scoff at things they do not understand. But here's what he's talking about in the context of the verse. They scoff at demons and they scoff at angels. Hello, somebody. Ding, ding, ding. Jude, you hit the nail on the head. Does anybody in the chat know a pastor or a leader that scoffs at you because you believe in deliverance? They're like, oh, that whole demon thing. You believe in demons and angels and they scoff and they joke. The moment you start talking spiritual, come on, type one. The moment you start talking deliverance, they scoff and make fun of you because they don't understand it. Listen, maybe you don't understand deliverance and demons and angels, but don't make fun of us that know how real they are. Don't scoff at what Jesus did. Jesus said the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when you call deliverance demonic. This was the context of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to attribute the work of God to the work of Satan. Remember, Jesus casting out demons and then all of a sudden the Pharisees say he cast out demons by the power of Satan. Jesus immediately goes into the teaching of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and says, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, just watch out because I can't even forgive you. That's the unforgivable sin. Why? Because you're saying the work of God is a work of demons. That's what Jesus said. So don't scoff at what you don't understand. And if you're a dreamer, praise the Lord. But false prophets use supernatural dreams to claim authority, okay? So don't get all judged if you're in here and you have dreams all the time. So they speak out of their own imagination and they claim it's from God. Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, this is God speaking through the prophet. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into futility. They speak visions of their own imagination, not from the mouth of the Lord. Again, they're making up dreams and visions. Um, they steal words from others. I talked about this last week. They steal prophetic words saying God spoke to them. That's Jeremiah 23, 30. The Lord says, I'm against these prophets because they steal my words from each other. So they're saying, God told me this when God didn't even tell them that. And we're seeing that a lot in the prophetic movement, which is why this entire month I dedicated to teaching prophecy, Bible prophecy, because you have to understand false prophets I'm going to manipulate you. Okay, we're almost done. Number five, are you ready? Oh, this is a good one. I could go 100 points here, but this is number five. This is not exhaustive. They refuse, number five, they refuse any accountability and responsibility. Jude says they scoff at authority. Whenever a false teacher or a false prophet is called out on their false teaching or false prophetic word, they will evade accountability. They're gonna say things like this. Are you guys ready? Touch not God's anointed. Who do you think you are to challenge me? Touch not my anointed. Touch not the anointing of God. And they're going to use scriptures out of context to try to defend their false preaching, their false narrative, and their false gospel. Whenever they're called on it, they're going to try to evade the responsibility. They think by you testing the word or holding them accountable, you're trying to harm them. The verse they quote, are you guys ready? Is Psalms 105, 13, and it's about doing wrong to God's anointed. But it's not wrong to hold a prophet or teacher accountable. In fact, the Bible tells us to. 1 John 4, 1 says, test the spirits. 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says to judge prophecy. 1 Timothy 5, 19 through 20 speaks of keeping people accountable. So it's not wrong to keep them accountable or to hold them responsible for what they preach. False prophets also will take to social media to try to discredit anyone who's trying to keep them accountable thinking that their size of following or their platform is an indicator whether they're right or wrong 
do do never 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 do don't ever think that because somebody has a large platform that they must be validated by god or they must be right because some of the guys that have millions of followers are wrong some of the guys that have 10 followers are wrong so just because you have a large platform they'll take to social media thinking well i have a hundred thousand followers friend listen I got, I have all, I, I'm about to hit 200,000 TikTok followers in less than a month of being on TikTok. Do you want to know what that means in heaven's eyes? You want to know what that means when it comes to validity? That's how much it means. It means zero. It means nothing. If I'm up here preaching a false gospel and then saying, oh, well, I have 200,000 TikTok followers in one month. Guess what that means? Nothing. It doesn't matter if I have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. If I'm preaching a false gospel, I still need to be accountable and responsible. One thing they'll say is, well, I don't need accountability because I have a lot of influential friends or I built an influential network, yet their friends are usually the worst ones to try to keep them accountable. Don't look to your friends to keep you accountable. Find spiritual covering, spiritual accountability. Do you have that, Isaiah? Absolutely. I have people in my life, my uncle, my pastor keeps me accountable for everything I preach and say. Every word that comes out of this mouth is I'm accountable for. I have to answer for it. And I have times where my pastor will text me during the broadcast and say, hey, you said this, you should say it this way. Or, hey, this wasn't right. Or, hey, check the verse here. Or, hey, every verse, every every video I post, he watches 100% of my content and I remain accountable and responsible. So I am not preaching something that I'm not walking in. So number one, first sign is they're, they, um, they are ungodly. Number two is they preach a mixed message. Number three is they deny the Lordship of Christ. Number four is they claim authority from their dreams and visions. And number five is they refuse any accountability or any responsibility. All right, guys, I'm not going to go into testing a prophetic word because I'll have to cut it short for the sake of how long I've already had you guys on an hour, 20 minutes. And I want to pray for you guys. And I don't want it to be two hours by the time I finish and pray. So I'll make a video probably this week on testing the prophetic word. I think we've overloaded you guys. I try not to go this long. And here's why. Not because you guys won't stay, but because when I overload you, you just are like, I don't even know what I learned because I'm overwhelmed. It's like going to somewhere to eat and the food's amazing. But once you start overeating, the food no longer tastes good. You're gorging yourself. So I don't want to gorge you tonight. I want to pray for you tonight. I know you guys are not in a rush and I'm going to hang out here for another 30 to 40 minutes, reading donations, talking to chat and praying with you guys. But I don't want to gorge you where you can't process the next portion of testing the word because that's very important. So I'll either share it next week or I'll make a video on it because right now I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe God to break us out of deception. I'm believing tonight that God wants to break somebody. Now, some of you might be in here right now. Listen, maybe you don't feel comfortable doing this. The chat is not on screen. But if after tonight you say, I've been under a pastor or leader, or I've been listening to a teacher that matches some of these things, I want you to type one in the chat because I want to see how many of you actually would be able to apply this and say, there's some preachers I've been listening to that are false preachers. And tonight I feel like the Lord is breaking me out of deception. I'm going to be more careful because remember what the Bible says, that these people can shipwreck your faith. So it's not just like, oh, I just listen to them. It's no big deal. Okay, lots of ones. It's that they can actually shipwreck your faith because they're living immoral. They're having dreams that are not from God. They're scoffing at authority. They're scoffing at supernatural beings because they deny the Lordship or they don't even preach the Lordship. Or maybe you're just under people that are preaching a mixed message. So these five things I'm applying to my ministry. I'm not above reproach. I'm not some amazing, awesome person that... I'm, I'm applying them going, Lord, I don't ever want to become a false teacher. So let's pray. Let's break the power of deception. Let's break the lies of the enemy. And let's ask the Lord to open up our eyes. Yeah, I put the music on because we're praying. It's, it's fine. I just didn't want it on while I was preaching. So Father, we pray. Come on, let's all begin to pray right now. Father, we just pray right now that you would break all deception off in Jesus' name. We pray, Holy Spirit, for your power. We pray for your fire. We just pray for your anointing to be released right now in Jesus' name. God, we are asking you to do what only you can do in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would break deception. We pray that you would break every lie. Even when that snake has come to us, Lord, or we've come under the power of religion or deception, and we don't even know it, I pray tonight that it would be lifted now in Jesus' name. Right now, you've given us power and authority, Lord. I pray, lift the veil. Lift the deception. Open up our eyes in Jesus' name. Open up our ears in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we just pray. Do what only you can do right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, release your power. 
Holy Spirit, release your fire. We are praying that we would have eyes to see and that we would have ears to hear and that, Lord, you would remove us out from under false teachers, false prophets. God, we don't want to be deceived, Lord. Your word says they'll deceive many. Let us not be those. We are zealous for your word. We pray that we would stay in scripture. We pray that we would stay in your word. And then, God, we would walk in holiness. Let us not live ungodly lives. Let us not live immoral, immoral lives, but we just pray power of the Holy Spirit. We pray anointing of the Holy Spirit. We pray fire of the Holy Spirit. Come right now. Remove the scale right now. In Jesus' name, I pray over every single one of you in the chat that the dirty scales would be removed, that the scales of deception, the power of deception would be removed. In Jesus' name, make us demon-proof. Make us deception-proof. Make us, Lord, right now, just no, not longer vulnerable to the power. Those that maybe have been dominating over us or using prophetic witchcraft or manipulating us or pastors that are controlling us or using prophecy as a sign of control. I pray, break it in Jesus' name. Every tie right now. I break off every tie that you have to that person in Jesus' name. Every tie to the ungodly, immoral person that's shipwrecking your faith. We break it in Jesus' name. And we just pray power of the Holy Spirit right now. I just pray, Lord, right now, I pray we would no longer love these smooth preachers, these smooth messages, or these false prophetic words. But I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would release a hunger in us for truth. Come on, just ask him right now. Pray as I'm praying. Give us a hunger for truth, God. In Jesus' name, give us a hunger for truth, God. Break off the ties. Right now, I know some of you have been wounded by pastors and leaders, false shepherds, and there's hurt there, there's soul ties. Tonight, by the blood of Jesus, we pray that it would break. Some of you living in other countries that have false teachers that are only in it for money and they tell you, oh, so $500 and God will bless you and give you a word. False, false teachers and prophets. We pray you would break it tonight in Jesus' name, God. In Jesus' name, remove it in Jesus' name, God. Remove the deception. Open up our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Release your power. I pray Holy Spirit fire. I pray Holy Spirit power. I pray in Jesus' name, sever the tie in Jesus' name. Uproot it in Jesus' name. The Bible says they're dead trees that are uprooted, that end is destruction. And we just pray, God, that you would uproot them now. Bring us in a place where we could hear godly preaching, godly teaching. God, let us never fall into deception. Keep us humble, God. I just pray humility in Jesus' name. Even over me, I pray, Lord, that I would stay humble, that I would wash people's feet, and I would never fall into deception or the lies or the traps of the enemy. Holy Spirit, just release your power. We pray healing over people's body in Jesus' name. We pray right now, God, that you would heal bodies in Jesus' name. Right now, if you need healing in your body, put your hand on whatever body part it is. And we pray power of the Holy Spirit. We pray healing hand of God right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. And do I prophesy? Yes, I do, Kelly. Absolutely, I prophesy. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray healing right now in Jesus' name. I even thank you, Lord, that you're stirring up the gift of genuine prophecy. Lord, stir up the gift of genuine prophecy in Jesus' name. Lord, we want, your word says we all can prophesy. Paul says we all can prophesy. So I just pray right now that stir up the gift of prophecy in the mighty name of Jesus. Stir up the gift of prophecy in the mighty name of Jesus. Stir it up right now. We desire it. We seek it. Break off sickness. Break off anxiety. Right now in Jesus' name. We pray Holy Spirit fire right now. In Jesus' name. Stir it up, God. Right now. Holy Spirit, fill him. If you've never been full of the Holy Spirit, ask him right now for it. Robo sam di araba kende se. Yambando lobo shom no robo bo shate. Kin rabasaka. Father, I pray, fill them with your Holy Spirit tonight. Fill them with your Holy Spirit right now. Everyone watching, be filled with the Holy Spirit and power. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Shin da la basa. Yombo bo konda sate ala mando robo bo shate la masete. Ham di arobo shata. Lord, we pray. We're not, we're not speaking in tongues for interpretation. We're praying in the Spirit right now. We are praying in the spirit. Different, guys. It's different. And I, right now, I know every one of you watching, God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. God wants to fill you. If you're already full of the Holy Spirit, God wants you to pray in the spirit. Begin to open up your mouth. Let the Holy Spirit pray out of you. In Jesus' name. Lord, thank you that you're giving us discernment. Thank you, Lord. And my daughter's doing great. Thank you for asking. She's recovering. In Jesus' name. Thank you for all, the, all of you that are praying for her. And we just pray, Lord, healing right now. Healing over her in Jesus' name healing over her in Jesus' name. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Release your power tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, guys. In Jesus' name, be healed. 
Someone said, the right arm works again, not sore. Praise the Lord. Lord, we pray healing. Guys, I have no power for you. I have nothing special for you. It's all about God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone said babbling in tongues, wrong. We're not speaking with an interpretation. We're praying in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14. Ro ro go read the book of Romans. We're praying in tongues with no interpretation. It's different. Thank you, Lord, release healing. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, release your power. Break off that spirit of religion, God. Break off that religious demon, in Jesus' name. Break off that religious false teaching, false prophet deception off of people right now, in Jesus' name. We pray healing over Dixie for the Hep B in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, fire. Holy Spirit, fire. Break addiction in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord. Help us, God. Help us, Lord, to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. Help us, Lord. Bring deliverance over those watching in Jesus' name. Jesus, we release power right now. In Jesus' name, we pray, Holy Spirit, fire. We thank you, Lord. Yes, God, expose right now. Expose all false, false doctrine in Jesus' name. Expose all false doctrine in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God is moving tonight, guys. Keep praying in Jesus' name. God is up to something. We are going to... I apologize, guys. I, I was sick all week long. My voice is very, very gone and scratchy and in pain right now. And I know I'm... <coughs> it's, it's honestly the anointing that I'm not coughing as I preach. I've been live for an hour and 30 minutes. I've, I've coughed. That's the first time because usually outside of this, I'm coughing nonstop. So the anointing of God, the power of God helps me to preach and get through this. So thank you to everyone that's been praying and been believing. We've been live for an hour and 32 minutes. If you want to sow into what God is doing, you can. If you want to sow into the ministry, you can. For those of you that are new, you are not sowing into getting a prophetic word. We're not selling prophetic words. You're sowing into the ministry. It's a biblical thing. I'm not going to go through a whole teaching on it. I've done it before. So if you want to sow into us to enable us to keep doing this full time, spreading the word of God, spreading the gospel online and traveling, go ahead and help us out by doing that. If you got blessed tonight, as we say it every week, don't dine and dash. Again, guys, excuse me for the voice. Don't dine and dash. Show into what God is doing. If you want to become a monthly partner, you can. The link's in the description and in the comments. I have my Venmo on screen, my PayPal on screen, my Zelle on screen, my website, all the ways to give. Here's what we're going to do if you're new. We are going to do a reading the donations, and then we're going to be hanging out with the comments, okay? So we're going to read and thank everybody. Some of you are like, well, I don't want you to read my name. Well, leave your name blank, and it'll be anonymous, okay? There's many of you that don't want your name read. That's completely fine. But those that are giving, I want to acknowledge, and I want to thank you. I want to be, give my you know appreciation towards you. And I love reading your guys' messages that you give in the donations, the messages that you host. Someone said, can you do a Zoom call that's not for partners? The reason why it's hard to do that is because as you can see, there's 2,100 people. And if I do a Zoom call and 2,000 people show up, I can't host 2,000 people. Um, I don't even know what the max Zoom is. My account, I think the max I can have is like 300. And I think that there's higher level accounts, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Can someone tell me? I don't know if it's possible to have 2000 people in a Zoom call, but that's why we don't have the Zoom call. Unfortunately, Christopher, we don't have Cash App. We have Venmo though. We got um, our Cash App doesn't work for some reason. We can't figure out why we wrote Cash App. They won't tell us why it's just frozen. So we don't have Cash App. We have Zelle, Venmo, PayPal, and website is very easy to give. Takes like five minutes, not even so. Thank you. Thank you to everyone giving. I appreciate it. I watch this with my dad and I love your channel. Thank you so much, Jacob. I appreciate you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the donations and then I'm going to hang out with the chat. So if you want to hang out in the chat, talk with each other, talk with me, just stay tuned, be patient. Thank you to everyone that's been here tonight. It's been awesome. I would have went longer, guys, especially on the prayer portion. But honestly, as I'm talking, it does feel like someone's stabbing me in the throat. Okay? I'm just being frank. I'm being frank with you guys. My, my throat is in a lot of pain. After I get in preaching and I come down from that anointing, my, my throat is in a lot of pain. You don't need to feel bad for me. I'm just letting you guys know why. Um, also, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I used to preach an hour and a half, two hours sometimes. It's just too much. And truth be told, probably an hour is too much, but I can't, I can't go less than an hour. You guys already know I have so much to say and I can't get out everything I want to teach in less than an hour. I think the sweet spot is 45 minutes to an hour. I know for some of you that's too long. Some of you are like, I wish you can go longer and you can digest it throughout the week. But anything over like an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, it just gets too much teaching and it's too, it's too much. It's too heavy and you stop retaining and you just feel like I'm gorging you. Okay. And thank you to everyone that's been praying for me. I appreciate you. And Sunday, I'll announce the podcast. Again, we did lock in Katie Souza for next month. We do have some awesome guests coming on soon. But Sunday, I'll announce who we're going to have Tuesday. So be excited. It's kind of like a little mystery thing, something for you guys to look forward to. Help us on Facebook, guys. Every time we post, excuse me, 
every time we post it really does help if you drop us a like a comment and you watch our stuff and on youtube helps with the algorithm as well and those algorithms are no joke okay here we go we're gonna start reading this and you know what guys oh hold on i left my water in the kitchen okay so i don't want to run and grab it because it'll take me like a minute maybe i'll run and grab it before i read the comments but let me see do i have a be right back screen up um i don't think i do i do okay after i read all the donations i'll run and get some water and then i'll hang out and talk to the comments because yeah it feels like uh it feels like a throat's in my throat a knife's in my throat not a throat jessica thank you so much jessica again said thanks so much for your obedience i watched your miracles of god video yesterday and went out today and randomly asked people if they needed prayer it was so fun amazing jessica she said she watched the video and went boldly starting asking people for prayer that's the way to do it gil and cynthia said thank you isaiah and i also want to thank my beautiful wife cynthia for introducing me to your ministry it's changed my life stay blessed praying for you and your daughter and family thank you so much gil and cynthia i appreciate you the victors said for justice is yes day love you listen to kids thank you victors we appreciate it yes i'm gonna be giving her a yes day and i'm gonna be facetiming her right when i get off it is heartbreaking guys to see your kid face swollen eye swollen shut it just does something to you i'm not gonna lie it's been it, it was a rough day yesterday but god got us through it Raquel Gibbs said, you are family. We love you. Keep giving hell diarrhea. Yes, give justice a yes day. Can you keep praying for me and my family? A lot of persecution from our church because of division, but going on strong. Raquel Gibbs, thank you. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Mindy Joe said, keep winning souls, brother. Thank you, Mindy Joe. Elizabeth Braggs said, love my church and praying for you and your family and the babies. Speedy recovery in Jesus name uh, for justice. Thank you. I think you said journey, but it's justice. Thank you, Elizabeth. Simon Theriault said you and john ramirez literally saved me from hell i can never thank you enough god bless you thank you simon i appreciate you bro and i'm so glad that god used us to help save you jennifer molina thank you tyreek simpson thank you michelle chase said luke 6 38 knowing that our god will always honor his word thank you jesus that justice is healed and whole nothing missing nothing lacking isaiah you're such a man of integrity you're such a great example of um how we are called to live god bless thank you michelle chase danny c I got your prayer request. Absolutely. I will I will pray for you, Danny. <coughs> Kelly said, much love from Canada. Thank you, Kelly. Suzanne Sever. Thank you. Anonymous said, I'm blessed to have found your ministry. Thank you for sharing your fire with us. It's contagious. Thank you. Edwin Zalea. Thank you so much, bro, for that generous, generous donation. You're a legend, man. Thank you so much, man. We don't take it lightly. Said, so we'll be catching the replay. I love you and honor you, Pastor Isaiah. Thank you for all you do. Preach that. Keep going. Edwin, thank you, bro. I know you're not on right now, but thank you so much, bro. I love you and appreciate you. It's okay, Elizabeth. I know what you meant. Thank you. Irene B. Um, Lanez said, testimony. My mom was struggling with demons from her old life. So me and my 14-year-old and 13-year-old son went... Um, and put on our training to work, put our training to work and really stepped up. And my mom feels God's peace in her home now. Praise God. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear you guys are taking the teachings and you're putting them to practice. Um, God is doing an amazing thing through what he's doing. It's incredible. Yvonne Garcia said, God bless you and your family. Does, let's see. Does an ex-husband have to pass away before you can get married again in God's eyes? Or can you remarry after a divorce without being an adulterer? Even if he left me for another woman, I'm confused. Okay, Yvonne, if your husband left you, okay, cheated on you, which is a, is a grounds, adultery is a grounds for divorce. God did, God did not want divorce. He didn't invent divorce. He made divorce a thing because people were getting divorced. And so he allowed Moses to allow the people to get divorced. Okay, if your husband cheats on you, leaves you for another woman, and you guys get divorced, Biblically, it is okay to get remarried. It was not considered adultery. If it was your husband who did it and you got remarried, it would not be considered adultery. Now, if you cheated on your husband and got remarried, that would be considered um, that would be considered adultery. So yeah, you're fine to get remarried. I'll do a video on this soon. I know it gets complicated, but I'll do a video on it soon. Victoria Davis said, thank you. Last November, you and Jenny Weaver preached on witchcraft, getting rid of items that might open doors to demons and seeking deliverance. The night I sought deliverance, an angel of the Lord visited me and set me free from a spiritual spouse. Awesome, Victoria Davis. Great testimony. Melinda Rollins said, this message was so for me. Praying for your daughter. Thank you, Melinda. Mendy Ellen said, blessings in the Lord. Thank you, Mendy. Julia Barron said, great teaching. Let's continue to spread it. Excuse me. <coughs> I don't want to cough on you guys. Thank you. 
It said, let's continue to spread the one and only true Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Carol Martinez said, awesome preaching. Thank you, Carol. Katie Gleason said, please pray for my, I got your prayer request. Thank you so much, Dakota. To God answered a question from my Bible study tonight in your stream. He is so good. Thank you for all your teachings. You rock. Thank you, Dakota. Bella Mancia said, God bless you and your family and your ministry. Pray, pray, pray for my business. Be Joy Boutique. Thank you. Thank you, Bella, and I will. Thank you so much. Is it a sin to drive without a license? Uh, it's a sin to break the law. The Bible says to keep man's laws. So I would say, yeah, it is. Because we're supposed to keep the laws of man. So I wouldn't drive without a license. Of course, if there's like an emergency thing, but I think breaking the law is a sin, if you ask me. All right. Aaliyah, Jonathan, and Layla said, thank you, Isaiah. Thank you so much, Aaliyah, Jonathan, and Layla. Melanie and Victoria, thank you. TJ, aka Trusting Jesus, said, I've been feeling... Uh, led to raise awareness for discernment to avoid deception. This got me pumped. Thanks, Isaiah Saldivar Fellowship page has our first Bible study. Okay. Thanks, our Isaiah Saldivar Fellowship page has its first Bible study tomorrow. And this is everything I want to say and more. Thank you so much. Thank you, TJ. And we are going to have a Discord up hopefully soon. So I've been very busy. Again, we plan to do a lot of stuff. It's just all time, time, time. What do you say about the three days of darkness prophecy? I say it's false. That's what I say. It's false. I don't think it's going to be dark for three days. I don't like prophecies where like on this day, this is going to happen when there's no scriptural backing for that. People claim days for clicks and views. I, I don't, I don't think it's true. I watched it. I think it's false. All right. I know everyone keeps asking. Giotto uh, family said, thanks for this teaching tonight. I've been praying for your daughter and this donation is for her. Thank you so much. Okay. Your pronunciation is Gu-E-O-D-O. Gu-E-O-T-O. Gu-E-O-T-O. Gooey Okay, I got it. Gooey Thank you for pronunciation. Thank you, Gooey family. That's a tongue twister. Sherry said, thank you, Isaiah. We love you and your family. May God shelter justice with his wings. I'm praying for your family. Thank you so much, Sherry. Phyllis Rumel said, thank you. Uh, Moses Jr. said, God bless you. I desire to be closer to God. Thank you, Moses. Tracy Gardner said, seed and sown to support the ministry. Thank you, Tracy Gardner. Anonymous said, you're such a, a blessing and you're so refreshing to listen to. Thank you for being bold and awakening the body of Christ. Thank you, Anonymous. Anonymous said, I got your prayer request there. Thank you. <coughs> Javier Ortiz, thank you. Anonymous, thank you. Lorna Fernandez, say God bless you and your family. Prayers for your daughter justice. Thank you, Lorna. Jen, say God is well. Please keep your eyes on the unseen. Thank you, Jen. Um, Ellie Sandra, thank you so much. Raid Saul, said I love you, brother. Thank you for all you do. Praying for your baby girl. Thank you so much. Kimberly Canduth, said your videos have been such a blessing i pray your daughter makes a supernatural recovery thank you kimberly michelle chase said brother isaiah tried marshmallows they're originally created for sore throats really really michelle i've never heard that in my life marshmallows help a sore throat i'll have to try that beverly walters thank you so much thank you um for saying this teaching was awesome my facebook family thank you how many of you are on facebook 376 and 1100 on youtube thank you guys april price so I've never spoken in tongues, but did something just now when trying. I don't know if it was me or real. God bless you so good. I wish I could give more. If you ask God for genuine Holy Spirit, he's not going to give you a false Holy Spirit. So the Bible says you ask him for something good, he won't give you something bad. So don't worry. Just pray in tongues. You got it. If you feel it coming and you feel something weird coming out, speak in it. He's not going to give you something false. Anonymous said, thank you. Kenneth M uh, Mueller said, keep preaching the fire. Tanya Horton said, thank you so much for your obedience. Um, Carla Glick, thank you. Anonymous said, God, may God continue to bless you and your family and give you favor and strength to finish the race. Thank you, Anonymous. Paul Holmes, thank you so much. Lara Fields, thank you. Um, Shanice B said, blessings to you and your family. We'll continue to lift you guys up in prayer. Thank you, Shanice. Jeremy Barmore, thank you so much. Gary Collin said, thank you so blessed tonight. Thank you, Gary. Bianca Bagley said, amazing preaching with a cheerful and grateful. I sow into your ministry and continue my monthly partnership and obedience to our Lord. Prayer, praying for justice. Thank you, Bianca. Ella Smith from Australia said, I need God for my children and myself. I need to exercise in what God's called me to do. Thank you, Ella. Fango Fango said, thank you, brother. Such a neat message. Thank you, JB. Said, thank you, bro. Love you, bro. I, um, I'm learning so much through your ministry. Forever grateful. Thank you so much. We're going to read the Venmo now. We didn't read the Venmo last week, but we're going to read it today. Just let me know how fast you guys want me to read it. So many amazing people giving tonight. Thank you, Megan Miller. Said, thank you for preaching the fire tonight. So relevant right now. Praying for healing over your daughter justice. Thank you so much, Megan Miller. All right, scale of one to ten. How fast should I read the Venmo? Do you come to South Carolina? I come to North Carolina quite often. I've been to North Carolina already twice this year. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get the Venmo going. 
Mich my micro machine 10 negative 5 6 16 10 10 10 20 3 okay some of you like it some of you don't 5 we'll go in between we won't go too fast but i do have to go kind of fast because if not i'll be here for a long time okay hold on thank you to everyone that gave on venmo it's at isaiah saldivar thank you guys so much all right here we go wow okay trevor chrysler say god bless your ministry thank you for preaching god's word every day how do i know if i'm speaking in tongues i'm afraid that i'm faking it. i want to be authentic between me and god not just battling nonsense because if you ask him for something good he's not going to give you something false so if you asked him for genuine he won't give you false tongues so don't ever feel like you're speaking in a false tongues you're not you can't make up tongues jesenia sanchez said a small thank you thank you jesenia Selda Holly said, you bless me. Thank you, Selda. Ginger Bradstrom said, live stream offering. Waylon Vidal said, God told me to sow. Thank you so much, Waylon. I appreciate you, bro. Andrew Thomas said, keep the fire going. Thank you, Andrew. Jenny Spiegel said, keep preaching the truth. Thank you so much, Jenny. We love you. Hunter Kistner said, I'm praying for justice. Treat you and Alyssa to a coffee and an energy drink on me today. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Hunter. We love you. Liz Ben Youssef said, gifts for justice. Thank you so much, Ruben Villa. Um, I got your prayer request there. Ryan Doherty said, Team YouTube, thank you, bro. Catherine Alvarado, thank you so much. Said, thanks for the video. Alicia Lyle said, Prayer for sweet justice, healing, and comfort for the rest of your family. You're, so, you're all so loved. Thank you, Alicia. Keith G Gester said, Praying for your daughter and entire family in this unfortunate incident. Thank you so much, Keith. Faith McEver, thank you. Brianna Valenzana said, Sending prayers for justice. Thank you so much, Brianna. Elizabeth Slack said, I pray for growth of your ministry every night. Every single Christian needs to hear your teaching. All Christ, praying the name of Jesus for you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Christina Hall said, keep preaching the truth and pointing out to the Bible to read for themselves. So much deception right now. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you, Christina Hall. Sabrina Hajaj said, God bless you, pastor. Mm. Said, I felt I felt a ring in my ear and sometimes I feel demons inside of me trying to manifest. I got an in-person deliverance, but nothing came up or spoke out. I have no open doors. I would just keep praying, maybe do a fast about it and then try to do another deliverance maybe. But I would just keep fasting and praying and asking the Lord to reveal something there. If you if you feel there's something there. Nomi Monroe said, thank you for this message. Blessings towards you and your family. Prayers for fast healing for your daughter. Andrea Strand said, this is your daughter's yes day. Prayer for complete healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Today's message was so convicting. Thank you so much. You helped me open my spiritual ears. Praise the Lord. Prayer request. I got your prayer request there. And excuse me guys for itching my nose a lot. It's just, it's a bit runny. Ashley Jensen. Um, got your prayer request there. Absolutely. Fernando Delgadillo. So thank you, Isaiah. Praying for speedy recovery. Thank you so much, Hannah Wilson. So speaking healing over your daughter. Safe travels home, Melissa, and your firstborn. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you, Hannah. Seth Rankin said, uh, does the deliverance even work if the person's not a Christian? I want to deliver my friend, but she doesn't believe yet. It's hard to do deliverance because the demons don't have to leave if there's a legal right. So I'll say it's very hard to do deliverance on an unbeliever. And I would go as far to say as I wouldn't waste my time doing it because the demons, if they do leave, they'll come back worse. But you can try. Awakening Remnant Church said, bless you and the fam. Love Jimmy and Whitney Canellis. Thank you so much, Jimmy and Whitney, for the amazing generous donation from Awakening Remnant Church. We love you and appreciate you. I've had re uh, a lot of recent pastors reach out to me since Tuesday about deliverance ministry. So I love it, guys. Glenda Marie said, praying for justice. Thank you, Lauren Lawson. Having revival, my family, my dad and mom love you. My kids are preaching. How could you um, have fun yesterday for your baby? Be blessed. Lauren, I will be praying for your husband. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Geneva Wicks, a good word. Isaiah, praying for your sweet little daughter. Love you, brother, and your beautiful family. Thank you, Geneva. Joshua Dozima said, sword. Thank you. And Nora Phillip said, Isaiah, this teaching was so powerful tonight. I know, the, I know the world needs teaching like this because so many are being deceived by false prophets. Keep teaching the true word of God. God bless you. And I pray for a speedy recovery for your daughter. Thank you so much, Anora. J Rock said, um... Can you discern the kind of spirits like witchcraft, death, fear, or do they feel different? Yes, you can. You can discern different spirits. Betty um, Yoakum said, we enjoy listening, have learned so much, praying for you and your sweet baby girl. Thank you, Betty. Nicole Norton said, praying for complete healing for justice. And I got your prayer request. Elisa Lawrence said, going through some spiritual battles, being bold for Jesus, Satan got mad, but the daily bread gives um, you give us is a blessing. Then my weapons. God is with, God is for us who shall be, who shall be, uh, who shall we fear? Thank you so much, Elisa. Brian Schultz said, God bless. Thank you, Priscilla Peters. Said, God bless your ministry. Come to Albany, Texas. Come to Rise Church. Maybe I, maybe in the future, I would love to come. Lorianne Reese said, Supernatural healing for justice in Jesus' name. One of my goals is to make sure that I come to Texas this year. So I think I just got a couple of bookings for Texas. So we'll pray about that. Thank you. Sammy CT. So thank you for all you do. Your ministry has really blessed me with wisdom and discernment. I'm 16. I've been getting really interested in healing and deliverance lately. God bless you. 
Thank you so much, Sammy, and I'll pray for you. Marissa Basilio, thank you so much. Wait, did I read these? No, I didn't. Emily Salas, thank you. Anonymous said, God bless you, Isaiah, praying for your daughter's healing and yours as well. Thank you so much. Gail, thank you. Janice, 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 uh, Janessa, Janessi. Wilson said, healing seed. I got your, I got your prayer request. Thank you. Bonob said, thank you for your inspired word as always. The Lord has changed me through your ministry, learning of spiritual things. I'm thankful. Thank you. Anonymous said, hi, Isaiah. Love you. Keep up the good work. Praying for your daughter. Thank you so much, Samson. Thank you. Tracy Chesson said, uh, please, in God's name, help my son Joshua and I. We desperately want to K. We won't want to K. I'll pray for you. Thank you so much. All the prayer requests coming in, I'm going to make sure I pray for. Okay. And you know what, guys? Well, my eyes a little dark there. I was thinking about getting context too for some streams just to change it up a bit because I'm always wearing glasses. Some of you don't even know what I look like without glasses, but I think I'm going to also get, I have contacts, but I haven't gotten new prescription. So I was thinking about doing that real quick, guys. If you want to hang out and chat, I'm going to stay for a bit and chat, but um, I'm going to go grab my water because I don't have water and I need to go grab it. So I'll be right back. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got my trusty water. I'm back. I love the Be Right Back sign. Thank you so much, Angie. I'm going to hang out here for a couple minutes, guys, and chill out with the chat. And then I'm going to engage with you guys a bit here. I love doing this. And then I'm going to jump off here because I have um, my mom still watching my kids. And I do have a couple other things I got to get done, as always, tonight. Special guest, uh, Nathaniel episode. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Overbill. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Third Dimensional. You can do Bible trivia on Kahoot. Yeah, I want to do that. I looked into Kahoot. Maybe we'll do that. That screen's cool. Thank you. Wow, that was so fast. Yeah, it was actually like right in my hallway right here. Come to San Antonio. Do you watch The Chosen? I've watched like three episodes of the first season, but I heard it's really good, so I'll probably watch it. Can I do Deliverance when I'm 13? Uh, if your parents give you permission, yeah. Is Soda Demonic? No. Shall never thirst. Isaiah can't make a video about salvation. I worry about this. Yeah, I can. Waiting for Discord? I know, it's soon. As soon as I have a little bit of downtime, as you guys know, it's been a very, very hectic week. Is that your shirt? No, this is Jenny Weaver's shirt. Shout out to Jenny Weaver. I'm the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. It's on Jenny Weaver's store. You guys know I'm sponsored by Jenny. She's always sending me stuff and I love it. So I wear her stuff more than mine. I actually had one of my shirts on and then I changed like three minutes before the broadcast. I have a nice cold drink. Me too. I got nice cold water here. In my sippy cup, all right? Can we get your music list? Like worship music? I have a book list coming out of my books and also I, I'm working on, it'll probably be up next week. All of my cameras, monitors, lighting, everything I use, I'll have, I'll have affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links for you guys. So if you buy any of the stuff I'm using, like if you buy it, Amazon will actually give me a percentage of that. Um, through affiliate marketing. So, but my point is I'm going to have all the links of all of my equipment plus books, like my top 10 favorite books. So I know everyone always asks for a book list and I always send people book names, but I'll have a list for you guys so you can click on it and get it on Amazon or whatever. So that'll be cool. Powerful teaching night is once saved, always saved coming soon. What does that mean? Is once saved, always saved coming soon? What is that? Can a woman baptize anyone? Yes. Women can baptize. Women can also prophesy. Hello, Isaiah. Um, it has been a blessing following you. Thank you, Anonymous. How is Justice? She's doing better. She's doing better. I actually just got a picture of her. I'm going to FaceTime her when I get done here. She's in Alaska, guys. She's flying home tomorrow. She's with my wife in Alaska. Let me see if I can show you this picture. Maybe this might be... She's already looking better. So you can see her eyes. She can actually open her eye now. But yeah, she's doing a lot better. I know your guys' prayers are changing things. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's just fast recovery and it's just the doctor. No, it's it's your guys' prayers. It's the prayers. I came to the Awakening 209 in September 2014, visiting from Italy while in the military. I'm now out in the military and a youth pastor in Oregon right now, below Pasco, Washington. Thank you for on-fire preaching. Awesome, Jesse Mace. That's amazing, bro. 
Yeah, she's doing better. God is moving, guys. Yeah, I was like, I was very emotional, guys, yesterday. The only times I, I the only time I cry is in the presence of God. Like in prayer, like I, I have a very hard time crying. It has to be God's presence. But I was I was crying like a little baby yesterday, looking at pictures of her in the hospital and not being able to be there. It's like the worst, worst feeling in the world is being in California. She's in Alaska and my wife's at the hospital with her. And it's just, yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Contacts are annoying. Yeah, that's why I stopped wearing them. But I, I do want to get some because I want to get some just for live streaming. So I don't have to always wear glasses. It's a little bit annoying sometimes. You're going to speak at Victory Outreach soon? Yes, I'm going to be speaking there in June in San Jose. Victory Outreach San Jose. Could a demon dictionary be an open door? I don't think so. Not if it's a Christian author and it's for the purpose of learning. No. Can you do a video on tips with evangelism? Yes, I will. I was just thinking about that today. Would you advise one-on-one -on -one deliverance or should you have a backup? I would advise having two to three people, but if you can't, one-on-one's okay, but I would advise two to three because it does get violent sometimes. How are you feeling now, Isaiah? I'm feeling a lot better, but I'm still a little bit sick. I'm still coughing and sore throat, all that, but I'm doing, I'm doing a lot better. What causes ears to ring? Uh, could be sickness, could be, I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but are you talking about spiritually? It could be demonic. That's one of the symptoms of a demon. Yeah, could be something spiritual. Is there a secret rapture? No, not that I know of. That's fine. I take my contacts off during the stream and put on my glasses. Yeah, I feel it. Ever thought about LASIK surgery? I did, but then I had a friend that got it done and told me how they do it. And I said, nope, I'll never do that because I just can't handle the thought of them cutting open your eye and all that. No. Why are preachers charging for deliverance? Someone said, very good question. There's a couple reasons why. Number one, they're doing it full time and they have to pay bills just like you have to pay bills. And so they can't pay their bills and do deliverance. So imagine this. I know this is going to be hard for some of you to imagine because you think preachers are supposed to be poor and you think we shouldn't give any money to any preachers. Imagine having to either do construction for 10 hours a day or doing deliverance 10 hours a day. If you do construction 10 hours a day, you're able to pay your bills. If you do deliverance 10 hours a day, you can't pay your bills because your landlord is not going to take a certificate for your rent that says, oh, I cast demons out of people. Is that enough to pay my rent? Because doing deliverance doesn't pay your bills. So sometimes when people are full time in ministry, they charge for deliverance because if they don't, they can't do deliverance. So I don't charge for deliverance, but I don't think it's wrong to charge people because some people do it for a living. And Paul talks about paying traveling teachers, especially well. Paul talks about sowing into people that are teaching you spiritually. Paul says, if I'm teaching you spiritually, I should be reaping physical things. So all of you poverty mindset people that are like, I shouldn't have to pay for anything. Here's what's amazing to me. Okay. You have no problem. And we're just going to get real because you, you guys already poked the bear here. You have no problem paying $100 to get your highlights or $150 to get your highlights done and get your hair done for four hours, but you're mad by blessing someone with $100 to cast demons out of you? $500 to $1,000? I think, listen, I think charging $500 to $1,000 is too much money. I think, I, think three, I think a lot of it is too much money that people charge, but that's not my point. I don't want to worry about amounts. If someone charges $500, just don't go to them and get deliverance. Now, let's talk. I don't, again, I don't charge for deliverance, so I could preach about this all I want. If... I get delivered, okay? If I go to your house and you're spending four hours, this is Isaiah Saldivar speaking, okay? Four hours doing a deliverance on me. I'm going to give you money. I'm going to bless you because you just spent four hours casting a demon out of me. You don't, you don't have to ask me. You don't have to say, oh, we don't charge. I don't care if you charge. Isaiah Saldivar, because I know the principles of reaping and sowing and generosity giving, which is New Testament. I'm going to give you money more than you charge and more than you ask because I live a lifestyle of giving and sowing because I believe it and I'm blessed because I sow into people and because I give New Testament giving is not 10% it is generosity giving it's above that okay so anyways I used to pay $500 a month for weed thank you Gladys thank you I can't I don't know how much I used to pay in stuff but I paid a lot for the family yesterday praying for you guys thank you so much anonymous I appreciate you so here's the thing. Let's let's say this, okay? Because I love all of you and I don't want to cause any division. If you think it's wrong to charge and you don't want to, you think, oh man, they're so wrong for charging. I don't charge. So praise the Lord. You don't have to hate me. Guess what? Don't go get delivered by someone that charges. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right? Merchandising the anointing is not of God, but their full-time ministries, yes, different. Yes. 
I am, guys, I, my 100% 100 of my income is from ministry. So, the landlord doesn't care that you have a lot of followers on social media or you're a pastor of a church down the road. You think the you think my sewage company that, or my lights or my PG&E or my um, water bill or my garbage is like, oh, wait, you're a pastor? Okay, you don't have to pay your bills this month because you're a pastor. You don't need any money. This is just a lot of bad poverty teaching in the church that says like, it's wrong to give to pastors and leaders. It's not. It's biblical. I could show you this. I've done it before. I'll do it again soon. Just Just for all you religious people that need it. Mm -mm, that's a good point. Thank you, Kendra. I had one pastor like, I only give guest speakers $50. I'm like, that's weird because your wife pays $200 to get her hair done. You take your kids to get sushi and it's $80 to take your family to sushi. And you're bragging that you pre you pay preachers $50 or $100 to preach? Like, come on, dude. That's why God can never trust you with more than 15 members in your church or more than $1,000 in your bank account because you don't even know how to be responsible with a little and God's not going to be responsible with more when you have such a poverty mindset. We give with a cheerful heart. That's that's how I give. Do you believe we're living in the last days? Yes. The Bible says pay your pastors. It actually does. Is Benny Hinn a false prophet or false teacher? I'm not going to speak on anybody specifically. You better preach. Someone said, wow. Amen. Isaiah, that clap, Isaiah. Burn. <laughs> How is your daughter and wife in Alaska? Were they on a trip? Yes, they're visiting my wife's sister in Alaska. This is my my wife's first time ever being away from my kids for more than one day. And yeah, it's it's been it's been it's been tough. Be praying for them. She comes home tomorrow. But yeah, they're in Alaska and I'm in California with my four-year-old and two-year-old. It's been good though. Being able to bond with my uh two-year-old and four-year-old harvest and journey has very been very good, very good, very fun, exciting, and it's been special to be able to spend just quality time with them. So I am daddy daycare this week. People are like, how are you going to survive? I'm like, I'm their dad. Of course I'm going to survive. I'm, I'm a hands-on dad, y'all. If you don't know, I change diapers. I vacuum. I clean. I take them places. I drive them to school. I am hands-on. I'm not the dad that's like, I'm not going to change diapers or feed them. That's for the mom's job. No, I do. I do. I do it all. What about paying for a prophetic word? I don't think you should be charging for prophetic words. That I'm against. I don't see it in scripture and... Who is full who's who's full time giving prophetic words to people? Like who does that full time? I don't I don't think I think that's completely different. So yeah, no. Do not I would never charge for a prophetic word. It happened to justice. So it happened to justice in Alaska with my wife. So she's in Alaska with my wife. She was sledding and she had an accident. Do you have a travel schedule? I do. Isaiahsalvar.com slash schedule. I only have one date on there now because I only travel once a month, but I have like four other dates um, in the next months to come that I'll be putting there. But right now I only have my San Leandro date. I'll be in San Leandro this month in the Bay Area. My daughter's doing good. Thank you. Isaiah was being a barista at Starbucks like. It was fun. I loved it. I was a barista for three years and I loved it. I, I loved working at Starbucks. Isaiah, do you know what the number 13 means? I don't remember. I used to know. How's your daughter doing? She's doing good. Thank you, Alicia. She's recovering. Clean cut. Thank you, Kenny. I get my hair cut every Friday morning. Fun fact. Have you encountered Lucifer in Deliverance? I don't remember. How's the Deliverance map? It's doing good. Thank you, Precious. When you come to West Texas, I don't have any dates right now, but I'm going to be intentional to be to get into Texas this year. Every dad should be hands on dad. I agree. Isaiah, you're going to be on Sid Roth this month? Yes. Yes, Donna, I'll be on Sid Roth this month. Actually, Sid Roth called me earlier and he left me a voicemail. He's like, hey, Isaiah, it's Sid Roth. I was like, oh, Sid Roth has left me a voicemail. He called me. So I have to call him back tomorrow because I was on, I was working, doing something for the stream. But I texted him back and I asked him to pray for justice. And then I told him I'll call. He said, you could just call me anytime this weekend. So I'm going to call him tomorrow. But I'll be on Sid Roth. I'm excited for that. I'll be on two of his shows, actually. Is my is your daughter doing better? She is. Thank you so much. She's recovering. Did you get our donation? Where did you give it out? I'm sure I did. If you gave on the website or a Zelle, I don't have access to that right now. But if you gave on Venmo or PayPal, I could see that immediately. Would you ever come to South Dakota if God if God wants me to? What's your thought on cremation for Christians? I I don't I personally don't think there's anything wrong with it because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So when you die, it's just it's just dust you come, dust you go. There's nothing there in the body. The body is just 
a piece of meat after you die. Your kids are beautiful. Thank you so much. Are you coming to North Carolina again? We miss you, brother. Yes, I will be this year. I'll be in New York in October. I'll be in Arizona in June. I'll be in Modesto in May. I'll be in San Jose in June. I will be in San Leandro this month in California. So I hope I got some people coming out, showing up strong in San Leandro. Do I have disciples in South Africa? Yeah, we do have people in South Africa doing deliverance on the map. I give deliverance ministries. That's good. I tell my family to bury me in my backyard when I die. What's your thoughts on Justin Bieber? Where's that at? Hold on. On Justin Bieber gospel album? Um, considering it has cussing in it, I don't know. I'm very, I'm very torn on him because I've been praying for him for so many years. I'm glad that God is moving in his life 100%. But at the same time, he says he's a Christian and then he comes out with a song that says, I get my weed from California and then goes on about how bad his girl is. So how could how could you be speaking life and the same mouth pollution be coming out the bible says yeah my buddy said i'm like oh sid roth called me uh paypal what, what did you put your name as i should be what did he say do you have the dates for october i'll be at v1 church in october I'll, I'll announce that when it's sooner, guys. Not until October. It's not none, none of the like registrations open or anything. Thank you, everyone, for praying for my daughter. We're overwhelmed by your support. Have you seen Bob Larson's virtual deliverance on YouTube? They're intense. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. Favorite sermon you preached so far? I've preached over a thousand messages without exaggerating. Probably more than that, but at least a thousand. So it's hard to say. I preached over 500 messages just at my Tuesday night church and then add all the traveling, which was way more than that. If you're cursing, you can't be blessed. Yeah, I agree. So one part of me is like praying for him, believing God to have a real encounter. The other part of me is like, there's a lot of mixture in Justin Bieber. Yeah, I'll be at V1 church in October and I'm going to be coming to Alexander Pagani's church too this year. So I told Alexander Pagani whenever, whenever you want me to come, maybe in Ju uh, July, maybe. Maybe in July, I'll be in New York at Alexander Pagani's. That'll be crazy, right? I'll, I'll love to do that. I love your secret place video that changed my life. Thank you. That was actually one of my favorites. Pray for my father-in-law. Absolutely, Leslie. Should we ignore the going to heaven and hell stories? No, I believe people can go to heaven and hell. The Bible speaks of, Paul talks about people going to the third heaven. So I believe it's possible for people to go to heaven and see heaven and come back to earth. Like it's in the Bible whether that's a, a vision or a trance and people that have gone to hell, like Bill Weiss went to hell in a trance. I believe that's that's biblical as well. And I believe it could happen. Did you hear about DMX's death? I did. I try to stay up to date as much as I can with pop culture. Are you ever going to do a video on worship? Yeah, I'll do a podcast too on worship. I'll be doing a video on the rapture. Yes, and the book of Revelation. Yeah, I did hear about DMX's death. Any plans to come to Michigan? Not right now. V1 Church is a church in New York. Mike Signorelli's church. I'll be there in October. Go rest. Thank you, Christina. I'm about to get off here soon. Did you hear of Israel announcing their Messiah? I haven't heard of that. Are you going to be in Arizona all three days in June? I'll be there Saturday and Sunday, not Friday. Can you collab with Marcus Rogers? I have several times and I'll be bringing him on again soon. But I have two podcasts with him on him. And I've done live streams with him on Instagram. Demi Lovato too. Oh man, the comments are coming really fast. My church is in California, although we're not meeting right now. And we're not meeting in the foreseeable future. Norris Johnson, what's up, bro? Appreciate you, man. We're actually about to jump off here at the end of our broadcast. Actually, our view count is not right because we have actually more viewers than that. Okay. Is the book of Enoch good? It is okay. It's a historical document. It's not canon. Is there a spiritual deception in Hillsong? I would say yes. Isaiah, we get just as a dog on yesterday. I'll get her a dog when we get our own house. We rent. We're not allowed to have dogs. But I'll get her a dog once we get our own house. Where is your church in Cali and Central California? 
Did you go to Bible school? Yes, I did. Kingdom Covenant Leadership Institute. I have a bachelor's in theology. Can you do meat with the supernatural life? What's that? Can I cast out of demons if, I, if I've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes, you can. Any plans to come to Chicago? Not as of now. Will God honor a fast if you smoke? Ugh, I think smoking is a sin, if you ask me. But God will honor a fast still. Did you get your water? Got it right here. Yeah, I can confidently say that there, I have heard false teachings from Hillsong. But I'm not going to go into detail on like this person, that person, none of that. What's the three days of darkness? It's a prophecy of a guy saying it's going to be dark for three days. That's, I do not believe is going to happen. Any plans to come to Seattle? Not as of now. Pasco, yeah. Isaiah has long hair as a guy sin. I don't believe so. I'll do a video on tattoos. Hillsong doesn't believe in deliverance, but I love their music. Is that okay? Yeah. Did you go rap me out? What does that mean? Any plans to come to SoCal? Um, not as of now, but I I want to try to get out there. I've I'm one of my goal. One of my yes, I have a plan to go, but it's not not scheduled yet. What do you think about Elevation Worship? I think they're good. Have you heard of Todd White? Yes, I have. I have a lot of friends that know him well. Jacqueline Guzman, thank you so much. Anonymous, thank you so much. Do you believe we're living in the last days? Yes. Is plastic surgery a sin? I don't think so. No. Is postpartum a demonic attack? It can be. It can be a symptom. I'm glad your baby girl's doing better. Thank you so much, Samantha. Please come to Kentucky. I've been to Lowellville before. At Evangel. Is nicotine patches a sin when quitting smoking? I don't think so. You love the crew. You will love the crew at Sid Roth. Is I'm uh, at Sid Roth. I'm glad, Terry. I've talked to three people from Sid Roth's uh, team on the phone, and so far I've loved every one of them, and I've met one of them in a service they came to. Is going on an anxiety pill a sin? I don't believe it is. Others can argue. That's my personal belief. Thoughts about Sozo? I don't do Sozo. I know Sozo means like salvation, right? Or like deliverance. But I don't personally do Sozo. Oh, these are coming in quick, guys. Under what circumstances should a person not get delivered? Under the circumstances that they're going to go back to the sin they're getting delivered from. Is eating seafood bad? No. Where do I begin in the Bible? The book of John. Start there. Sid Roth, okay. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Isaiah, do you use a humidifier when you're sick? Yes, I do. Sometimes. Are you bringing Jeremiah Johnson back? I don't know if he's doing any online stuff right now. I found your, your video because of John Ramirez on Sid Roth. Oh, that's awesome. How, how did you do that? To explain how you found my video on John Ramirez on Sid Roth. I don't think he talked about me, did he? Maybe just you were watching that and then mine showed up? If you have an incubus demon, are you sinning? No, not necessarily. How should I spread the gospel as a teenager? Do it on TikTok. It's crazy right now. You can literally go viral like so easy. Come to SoCal. I plan to soon this year. That's one of my targets. I have targets of places I want to go. SoCal's on the targets this year. I'm not, I'm not going to speak on anyone specifically, whether it's Todd White, Hillsong, Bethel, none of them, because... Um, I don't like to speak on people I don't know personally, and there's a lot of different opinions on all these people, and I don't want to. I don't want to be causing controversy. Controversy. Yes, I'll pray for you about your T-shirt business. Will you teach about the third heaven? Heaven? Yeah, absolutely. We can do an entire live stream on heaven. I'm not allowed to use TikTok. Okay. Please come to SoCal. I did want. I didn't want to spam, but someone else did, and I got answered. Okay, I don't know what that means. Is using wisdom. Yeah, I don't like... Mm. I'm not going to cause controversy, guys. I'm not... I don't have... Here's the thing. I don't have energy to fight battles that are unnecessary. So if I'm going to start calling people out and, and causing controversy, I don't even have energy to... I'm, I'm trying to fight my own battles with the enemy. Why am I going to start extra battles to fight that I'm not even authorized or have energy to fight? So I pick my battles wisely. Will you teach on the vaccine? I did a video on is the vaccine the mark of the beast, but I don't have plans to do a video on the vaccine. Again, I don't want to bring division over people to people. 
unnecessarily. Uh, uh mm, mm, will there be marriage in heaven? Um, I know they say no, but there's an indication. No, there's no marriage in heaven. You will be unmarried like the angels in heaven. So for instance, somebody wrote on my video of the incubus succubus and like spiritual spouses. They said, Isaiah, the Bible says there will be angels can't get married. There's no marriage. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says you will be like the angels in heaven who are unmarried in heaven. So the book of Genesis talks about how angels, fallen angels were marrying people. But in heaven, you won't, angels don't get married. But spiritual spouses can marry people. Spirits can attach themselves and come and covenant and try to, and marry people according to book of Genesis. But that's a video I already have made. So I won't go into detail on that. Um, angels can have sex with people on earth. Yes, but not in heaven. No, you will not be married in heaven. It's very clear you'll be unmarried like the angels in heaven. I haven't talked to Kevin Ewing yet. Mm -hmm. Love your teachings. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I'm a pastor and I've been called to Spigly Deliverance. How can I get more information? Okay, so we have over 50 hours of teaching on our channel. I would recommend if you're new, Felicia, buy When Pigs Move In. That's the best book to buy. When Pigs Move In by Don Dickerman, if you want to start doing deliverance. And we just did a podcast last week about starting deliverance in your church. Is progressive Christianity the great falling away? It's part of it. Oh, someone said there'll be no new marriages. So you're saying we'll be married, but we won't be given in new marriages. Is that what you're saying? When are you coming back to um, Newton? Hopefully this year, maybe the end of the year or sooner. I don't know. I've preached at Praise Chapel before. Angels can't have children. I don't want to get into this teaching. It gets too deep here. Start following you for two months. Love your teaching. Thank you, Krista. I appreciate that. Do you marry people? No, I don't. I don't marry or bury. I've done one funeral. And the only reason why I did the funeral is because the lady's dying wish was ask Isaiah Selver to marry me, preach the way he preaches when he travels and preaches at his church. And if you ask him to do it, he'll say yes. And that was her one of her last words. And she died like less than 20 minutes later. So I pretty much had to do it. I was like, I'm not going to say no to a lady's dying request. True story. I've learned so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. The children of the Nephilim. Yes. Do you, do you believe people who have gone to hell? Yes, I do. I believe people have gone to hell and come back. Just like Bill Wees, who's a friend of mine. Absolutely, I believe it. Pastor, do we need school to become a pastor? No. When do you come to Florida? I don't have any dates right now. Thousand year of grain of Christ. Yes. Is it okay to be Catholic because I'm a Catholic? Um, I would say it's wrong to pray to anyone besides uh, God and Jesus. So if you're praying to saints or Mary, I'd believe that's wrong. Yes. Praying to the rosary, I believe is wrong as well. It would be considered idolatry. What is progressive Christianity? There's a lot of definitions for it, but it's basically like be accepting of everybody. Homosexuality is okay. This is okay. We need to evolve grace and all that. So that's the gist of it. Oh man, I don't even know what my craziest supernatural encounter is. What does it mean when you wake up every night at three o'clock? Could be that you're under spiritual attack or God's calling you to pray. Mm -mm -mm. It's also wrong to call a priest a father. Yes, it is. Have you ever been to Kona, Hawaii? No, but I was going to go to YWAM in Kona and speak there before COVID. How can blasphemy of the Holy Spirit be committed today? Very simple. Call somebody casting out demons of the devil. When you attribute the work of casting out demons to the work of Satan, that's what Jesus says, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Anything you attribute, when the Holy Spirit's moving and you're saying that's satanic, that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Go read the whole entire chapter in context. Don't separate it by verse and you'll see exactly that's the context. How can we meet you when you go to Arizona at the end of service? I'll do like a little meet and greet and talk and hang out and meet people in June. Charismatic just means charismata, which is the gifts of the Spirit, right? Charisma, gifts, grace. So yeah, the charismatic movement is of God. Depends though, there's been abuse in it. 
All right, guys. I love you guys. I thank you for staying on. I've been live for two hours and 20 minutes. I'm going to jump off here because I got some other stuff I have to do. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on Monday night for my call-ins and then Tuesday night for the podcast. I can't wait, guys. I'll announce that Sunday. I love all of you. All right. I'll do the bobblehead peekaboo. There you go. There's the bobblehead that you guys have been asking to see the whole broadcast. Hold on. How can we get him in focus? I don't think he's going to get in focus because I'm in focus. There we go. There's the bobblehead. It's not an idol. Everyone relax. No one's praying to the bobblehead. Stop being weird. There you go. All right, guys. Love you guys. I'll do peekaboo bobblehead. Yes, yes, yes. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks for praying for justice for me. And stay tuned. Everything we post, help us get over the shadow ban. Like it, comment, subscribe, share, do all that. Uh, love you guys. See you Monday. Yeah, the bobblehead do does have a nice smile. I can tell he had braces. All right, here you go, guys. I know for some reason that's so funny because I laugh every time I do it. That was me preaching tonight, moving my head all over the place. I know. I know that's your guys' favorite part. All the hours I spend studying, and that's the best part. No, I'm kidding. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Good night, everybody. He got the Holy Ghost. Why is that so funny? I don't know. It is so funny, though. The ball behind needs a sippy cup, right? All right, love you all. I love when it's over in a hair as they talk over the ending screen. I don't know why. I know everyone says that. They're like, I have to wait till the ending screen. I have FOMO. I'm going to miss out. I love hearing you talk over the ending screen. I don't know why. Nobody knows why they like it. We are on Spotify. We're on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. You have to look up Revival Lifestyle Podcast. Tonight will be on fri uploaded Friday on Spotify. Revival Lifestyle Podcast is what you have to look up. Sippy Cup Peekaboo. It's satisfying. Thank you. The names used to be tradition. I know, Ryan. I'll do the names on Monday. My voice is just dead. Good night, guys. Love ya. See ya. Keep praying for my daughter. I'll keep you guys updated. Good night.